pick. He is dropped down immediately. Big defensive play by the Bulls. And he will go all the way for the touchdown. The South Florida gets around the corner. Welcome to the University of South Florida Jim Levitt Coaches Show. The Jim Levitt Show is brought to you by Dodge and your friendly Dodge dealers. The joy of Pepsi. You save supermarkets. You save, you really do. Huntington, the proud sponsor of the Huntington Junior Bulls Club. For more information, visit www.gousfbulls.com. And be sure to join the Bull Stampede this season. For ticket information, call 813-974-6816 and become a part of the Bull Stampede into 1A football. No rest in Division I football. Week one and the South Florida Bulls take on one of the favorites in the MAC, Northern Illinois, right down to the game's final play. And now week two, and the Bulls take on the Big East and the Pitt Panthers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Keck, and welcome to the Jim Levitt Show. And Coach... I know to you, a loss is a loss is a loss. But let's remember, you played a ton of freshmen in this season opener. The reason I'm smiling a little bit, Al, is because you said, and now the Pitt Panthers, you know, <laughs> here you, you're, we're going to talk about a loss, and all of a sudden, then you hit me with the Pitt Panthers. I'm sitting there going, what, what are we doing here? But it was tough. It was obviously, I'm not smiling over the, the loss, obviously. Those are tough to take. You know, in any game, you don't, you're never prepared to lose. I don't like to lose. It bothers me. So when we go in there and we lose a ball game like that, especially as close as it was, they kick that field goal, you know, it's, it's tough. And, um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's part of the process of what we're trying to do, you know, trying to build a Division I-A program and one that can compete at that level. And uh, what I was happy with is that our guys came out and played with confidence, and we went after them and we went toe-to-toe with them. And, and we didn't take the back seat to Northern Illinois, and I, and I appreciate our players as far as that goes. You know, now we got Pittsburgh, and uh, uh, it doesn't get any easier, but it gets more exciting. So we're, we're excited about, uh, about uh, you know, about tonight in the ball game. Also in this game, you unveiled a brand new offense, yet you scored on two big plays. Overall, your thoughts on this new offense? Well, you know, we, we want to spread people out. We think that gives us, a, you know, an advantage that uh, if you can put some defensive players on islands and uh, make them play and uh, uh, stretch a field, uh, you know, we think that might help us. And, uh, you know, it is a big play offense. It certainly was with Marquel to DeAndre, you know, with the two long touchdown passes. But also, I was real happy with our offense driving in the third quarter. We didn't punch it in. That has been something that uh, uh, we've worked hard on. And, uh, and really, we had our chances right there at the one-yard line. But, uh, but at least we came away with points, and that's always important. Uh, but we got drive, got big plays. Uh, you know, I, I was happy with it. You unveil a brand new offense, and your defense really shuts down their passing game. Gave up some yards on the run, but no. the passing game, you really shut them down. Bernard Brown comes back for you. He's been out on a redshirt year, also been out with injury. He played very well for you. No, that's amazing. You know, Bernard's uh, always been a competitor. You know, to have the hip injury he had last summer and to come out and, and do what he does is, is remarkable. And, uh, you know, we, he always surprises us with new things like that. Our guys did a good job against pass game. The big play, we stopped that. The boots, we contained the quarterback, did, did some good things defensively. You got to stop the run game, got to stop the inside run game, uh, certainly to have success. And we didn't do that you know, in the fourth quarter, especially. Interesting looking at this year's uh, football team. Again, so many changes. That includes uniform numbers. You have some changes here coming up with the uniform numbers. How does this work? Because sometimes you'll see a player like Joe Morgan. He was number 38. Now this year he's number one. Yeah, it drives everybody nuts. You know, especially our equipment manager. He's got to go and change numbers and sizes and names. And, and uh, But, you know, maybe I'll change the policy. But what I've done before <laughs> is when they come in as freshmen, they have to take whatever's left. As they get older, as some guy retires or leaves the program, uh, he ends up taking their number and so it kind of switches like that, but uh, uh, so it keeps everybody on their toes. Now, a very young football team, how do you think this football team will react after a very heartbreaking loss? Well, you know, I, I think all people, you know, when you're a competitor and you invest a, a fair amount into, uh, into a, a ball game, it, it hurts and it's, uh, and it's, and it's tough. Uh, but, you know, our teams in the last four years have always come back and bounced back and, and gotten back to business and worked hard. And uh, this week in practice, our guys were like that. They knew that they, they could have done some things better, things that we think we can correct. Uh, and, and you can't spend much time thinking about the loss if you're going to have any chance of success against a team like Pittsburgh. All right. Up next, we will talk more about the Bulls and more about the next opponent, the Pitt Panthers. 
Back to the Jim Levitt Show. Once again, the South Florida Bulls head north this weekend. They head to Pittsburgh to take on the Big East and the Pitt Panthers. Pittsburgh went to a bowl game a year ago at 7-5. and five. All right, while the Bulls are very young, they still have some familiar faces in this program. That even includes the coaching staff. And among the grad assistants, one of the most legendary figures in Bulls history, the former linebacker, Jason Butler. This feature is brought to you by the joy of Pepsi. Jason was a great player for us. Uh, people don't realize last season he played basically on one leg. I mean, the, the bravery that he played on was unbelievable. I mean, he asked in order to pick up his uh, foot, he's got to pick up his leg. I mean, that's unbelievable that he was able to play last season like that. Anybody can dwell on the bad things. I mean, I'm, I'm just thankful and lucky to have this opportunity to learn from these coaches. I mean, there's so much experience for uh, he comes to the coaching field just like he played. He is right in your face. Here we go. He's going to be a great coach. He, he's got a lot of knowledge. He's eager, and he relates well to the players. I mean, we're real fortunate to have Jason. Yeah, Jason, I thought, was always a good leader, especially, you know, he come off the injury, and then he have a feeling in his foot, and he can still play with it, you know, all through the year. And that, that pushed me a lot, seeing that somebody could do that. A lot of the players uh, uh, I played with, so they understand the type of person I am and if I can help them in any little way because I most of the linebacker core at least the linebacker core we're always in the same frame of mind so we're, we're a lot of light all the linebackers are a lot of light so I think that uh, that helps a lot and uh, his leadership as a player you know just carried on to a coach because I mean the way he talks with us the way he works with us he, he always knew what he's doing he knows what he's doing now and it really helps out a lot I mean having somebody like that um, it was definitely different. Um, you just get to understand more football than, all right, here's the ball carry, let's go tackle him. It's more of a, you understand more of the chess match that goes on between the defense and the offense more. So I think it really helped me understand a lot more. Well, what's nice about Jason, Jason was a leader when he played for us. From day one when he stepped on the field, he always tried to take charge. He was a captain his second season, uh, or it might have been his third season, whatever it was. but. He's always been a leader on this defense, and now it's just another role for me. Still the leader, they still people look up to him. Yeah, I've always wanted to be a coach. So um, I'm looking at a great opportunity um, to learn from all the coaches, but especially from Coach Kravitz and Coach Burnham. They, they really know what they're doing, and I'm working hand in hand with both of those two. And uh, I really think it'll be a good experience for me. Jim Levitt, this man had to fight to even walk again. Tell us about the courage he displayed and how the team rallied around him. Well, he's gone through a lot, you know, for, for a young man that had such ability and uh, such passion for the game to, uh, to get hurt like he did in the Southwest Texas game a few years ago and come back, uh, you know, when he really had only feeling down one leg. You know, he had so much nerve damage on the other leg is, is remarkable. And, you know, we talked about Bernard Brown earlier. Jason Butler has, has uh, uh, you know, played literally with one leg, like Rick Kravitz had said. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's that, that strength, the conviction, and uh, that, that purpose, and, uh, and the focus, and the vision, all those type of things, it just carries over to other players. An incredible young man in Jason Butler. Well, the players started class recently. You want busy? Imagine your football commitments while taking a full load of classes. And remember, job one for these players is to get a degree. Next on the Jim Levitt Show, you'll meet the people that help the Bulls off the field. Welcome back, everybody. Al Keck, along with the head coach of the South Florida Bulls, Jim Levitt. Now, we see the Bulls every Saturday on the field, but game day is only a small part of the college football experience. They have to make the grade in the classroom long before they hit the football field, and many times it takes academic advisors to help along the way. This feature is brought to you by Huntington and the Junior Bulls Club. We deal with not only the initial admission of all of our student athletes to this institution, the orientation, the academic advising, the registration, and then paramount to the success of this program, and, and actually the continued eligibility of our student athletes, is the academic tracking and monitoring of our student athletes. All of our new student athletes, regardless of whether or not they're freshmen or a transfer student, has to participate in, in our program, our Excel program. Our student athletes are paired up with a counselor. 
And specifically, we, we try to group our student athletes by sport with a specific counselor. Cindy Moore handles with two other counselors all of men's football. Now, their, their requirements as participants in Excel, they have to meet weekly with their Excel counselor. Prior to the completion of the first week of classes, they need to provide their counselor all of their course syllabi, and immediately the counselor communicates with every one of their professors. Coach Levitt and the administration, and including all the assistants, everyone takes it very, very seriously. They must succeed academically to play. This area and the services that we provide are, are they're very, very important. That's our goal is to keep them organized in all of their classes and keep them up to date on where they stand in all of their courses. Physically being away from campus, having to travel, having to take into consideration just the, 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 the physical um, burden of travel and then of course competing on the road and being displaced from the university and the class. I mean, it's, it's just a tremendous, you know, again, mental strain. And, and you have to keep yourself mentally up to be able to handle returning right back on the campus and getting back into your pattern here. They see what goes on Saturday. They don't see what goes on during the week and the amount of time in coordinating all of the efforts from attending class, attending study hall, attending Excel counseling meetings, um, film, practice, everything that's involved Monday through Friday and Sunday evening sometime for study hall. And I think that's why we've seen such, such tremendous success in the classroom from our student athletes. I mean, yes, we provide them support, we provide them structure, we provide them, you know, academic counselors and monitors, but first and foremost, we provide them genuine care. Coach, I remember my days in college. I took a full load, but I didn't have the commitment of football. Tell us about the average day and the demands these kids have to go through every day. Well, it's, it's tough, you know, and Phyllis and Cindy certainly do a great job, and then their staff. I know they would say that there's a, there's a host of people that help them. Uh, but, you know, to give you an idea how, how productive we've been, uh, a couple years ago, you know, we, our football program had a higher GPA than Tulane, and, and this past year higher than West Point. So you're, you're looking at some pretty – strong people to compare with right there and uh, it just shows the, the effort and the time and the commitment that's being made uh, here. Now, these guys come here to get an education. That's, that's the end of the story right there. Uh, certainly we, we love to play football and, and to get out in the field and they, they have to do an awful lot to prepare for those football games but they're here to get an education that's foremost and, uh, uh, and certainly have done a great job with it. Now 10 seniors on this football team when we come back you'll meet shall we say the elder statesman on the Bulls offensive line, Jimmy Fitz. That's next on the Jim Levitt Show. One of the question marks for the South Florida Bulls coming into the season was how do you replace a veteran offensive line? Well, gone are the likes of Kenyatta Jones or Joey Sipp. It means the anchor of the line has to step forward. And leading the way for the South Florida Bulls up front, Jimmy Fitz. Yeah, it seems like just yesterday that uh, you know I was coming out as a freshman, going through two a days, and uh, you know it sneaks right up on you. You become a senior before you know it. Now, a lot of a lot of people, you know, they they probably don't realize exactly what happens in there, but you know we're we're the, the guys that make it happen, really. You know, we uh, if we don't get the blocks done, you know, then there's no way that the quarterback can throw the ball or the receivers can catch it. So uh, you know, you know, a lot of people don't. I realize that, but you know it's very important. We actually do get you know, a little bit of recognition from you know like Marquell. You know he, he usually tells a good job, and you know, the receiver caught the ball usually comes up and pats on the back and tells a good job. But uh, you know a lot of a lot of the fans and you know, stuff you know probably don't realize exactly what we have to do to make it happen. Uh, it's, it's incredible, you know. It gives me a you know a nice perspective on uh, you know what I can do to to make it to the next level. Because I'd like to do that someday, and you know, hopefully, uh, I can show them this year that I can do it. So, you know, uh, you know, going through the hard times during two days and practices, and then you know, being able to celebrate after you win a game, you know, with everybody, and it's just, just good memories. Because you know, I think about her all the time, and uh, you know, uh, 
for playing football, you really don't have a whole lot of time to do anything else. I mean, I try to, I try to do what I can. You know, every weekend go and see her, and you know, just whenever I get a chance, call her up or go and see her. It's a good, a good life for my daughter, and you know, have a have a good life for my fiance, and make my family proud of me. Now, coach, we just talked about the academics. Add the academics to football, along with a daughter even more responsibilities for your uh, football team. Well, you know, Jimmy's got a lot on the plate there, certainly, and it's good that he's a senior. He can, he can handle it. He's been through a number of things. Uh, he's a big one, boy. I tell you, 6'2", 315 pounds, and uh, you, you like that. Uh, he's strong, and he's, uh, he cares so much. One of our team captains and has done a, done a good job. We've only played one game, but done a good job, and he's going to be a key now uh, to hold that offensive line together, as has been said, uh, as we move through this season. So he's uh, – but he's uh, – He's a guy you like to jump on those shoulders, <laughs> guy that size. And he has very big shoulders. All right, when we come back, you ready for this, Coach? We'll have our fan question of the week. Don't go away. You're watching <laughs> The Jim Levitt Show. You know, the week is brought to you by You Save Supermarkets. You say you really do. Coach, moving up into Division I, you're going to be uh, dealing with a lot more size and uh, speed than you have in the years past. Uh, you got any ideas about how you're going to attack the other team's offense and defense? <laughs> there you go, Coach. Boy, it gets tougher every week. <laughs> you know, you know, we're, we've got pretty good speed. We match up pretty good with most people, I think. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, you know, our offensive line, defensive line, you know, we're not as big probably on the defensive line as, as uh, maybe what we'll eventually be, but we do run pretty good. Offensive line, we've got some pretty good – we just talked about Jimmy Fitz, you know, 315 pounds. He's, he's not small. Uh, but they, you know, the experience of playing that level of football and the, uh, the, the speed always, always uh, uh, you know, uh, I guess it decreases. I guess it gets faster is what I'm saying. But uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, uh, so that's the thing we have to kind of just uh, work with. But I think we'll be fine. We match up uh, all right, I think. You know, it's interesting. We talked about the offense and the defense against Northern Illinois. How about your young kicker, Santiago Gramatica? He's a freshman going into a brand new situation, and he came through for you. Yeah, he did a nice job. You know, I'm real proud of Santiago. He's, uh, uh, you know, he, he did what he needed to do. He got the ball through the uprights, and that's all you can ask. And, uh, and we'll, he'll be counted on to do some more this year. Up next on the Jim Levitt Show, we'll check out the scouting report, and we'll take a close look at the Pitt Panthers. Welcome back to the Jim Levitt Show. All right, Coach, let's take a look now at the Pitt Panthers here with the scouting report. The scouting report is brought to you by Dodge and your friendly Dodge dealers. Pittsburgh, one of the glamour programs in the Big East. You've taken on teams from the SEC and the Big 12. Should be very interesting this week. Well, we're excited. You know, they've got a great deal of tradition. They've won a number of national championships in their, in their history, and uh, they're good. They've got a number of people back on defense. Uh, I think 10 stars back. They run well. They're active. They, they well coached. They're all around the ball. Uh, you know, certainly uh, you can see it even here. They're just they're just moving all over the field. And and uh, they're up front people inside. They're big and strong. Defense men's are athletic. Linebackers are very good. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, be a tough task for us uh, to see if we can uh, move the ball on them, certainly. And, uh, you know, they, they've got uh, just – a lot of good players offensively. They've got two different quarterbacks that can play, both very good, uh, throw the ball well, uh, can run and throw. Big offensive line, you know, like you would you would expect, uh, you know, out of Pittsburgh. And and of course, then they've got a good big fullback, good tailback, they run hard. And uh, Antonio Bryant, he's not a bad receiver. <laughs> he's one of the top receivers in the country. Now Pittsburgh won its opener, 31 nothing over East Tennessee State. Again, Priestley. Decent quarterback. How about the freshman there, Kirkley? 229 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> you don't like to see that. He, obviously, <laughs> he's got some ability. He runs low. He's he's thick. He's strong. He has good vision. Keeps his legs moving, and uh, obviously, he's pretty good. Now, you talked about the defense on Pittsburgh. That it's a very veteran, strong defense. Held the Buccaneers to 180 yards of total offense, seven sacks, two by the linebacker, and Gerald Hayes had 14 tackles. Well, Gerald Hayes, they moved him to the middle because he's one of their biggest playmakers, obviously, and, and they pressure a lot. You know, they, they, uh, uh, they play a fair amount of zone on the back end, but they come with uh, seven, eight people a lot, and uh, so you're going to have to make some quick decisions. Uh, it's going to be a big play one side or the other. 
All right, let's check out the injury report now. Now, Antonio Bryant, again, one of the top receivers in the country. He may be a question mark with the ankle sprain, but you seem to feel you're going to see him. Well, I, I think so. You know, I, I'm sure he wants to play. I'm sure he wants to get out there. And, it's, you know, he's from Florida. He's playing a team from Florida. And, uh, you know, they're talking about him for the Heisman. And, you know, I'm sure he wants to get all the stats and get all kinds of numbers, make big catches and plays and all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure he wants to get on the field. And, uh, you know, so we'll, we'll find out soon enough. So here we go. It'll be the Bulls and the Panthers, and you can see that on Fox Sportsnet, live from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Jim Levitt, the best of luck coming up this week and throughout the season Alrighty. as they take on Pittsburgh. And we will see you next week right here on the Jim Levitt Show. So long, everybody. From Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's University of South Florida football presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Today, the Bulls take on the Pitt Panthers. And another first for the South Florida Bulls program. Today, they take on one of the most storied programs in all of college football in the Pitt Panthers and the Big East. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Keck. With me, Doug Graber. And, Coach, this step for the South Florida Bulls into Division I means taking on a program that has won five national championships. Yeah, and you talk about a great uh, tradition in this program. 111 years playing. Guys like Dan Marino, Mike Dick, uh, Tony Dorsett. Boy, they've had a lot of great ones here. Now, the Bulls showed that they could come up with the big plays despite the loss to Northern Illinois. Quarterback Markwell Blackwell and his wide receiver DeAndre Rubin show they mean business. Yeah, DeAndre Rubin, uh, watch the burst right there to separate from the Northern Illinois corner. That's what he brings to the table. He runs 4-4, but he's got great burst and explosiveness, and he's the one guy in this lineup that can go the distance at any single time. Already a break today for the South Florida Bulls. Pitt will not have its number one weapon wide receiver, Antonio Bryant. He's out with an ankle injury. Yeah, the South Florida kind of catches a little break here. Antonio Bryant is an amazing player. Uh, won the uh, Bolitnikoff Award last year. A Heisman uh, candidate, certainly. Uh, he's a great one. That helps South Florida a little. Now, Pittsburgh just manhandled East Tennessee State in the opener, 31-0. The Panthers have a ton of people back from a team that went to a bowl game a year ago. I, I guess so. 18 starters returning, 51 lettermen. And, of course, South Florida is a very, very young football team. 26 freshmen on this trip. And the Panthers say, don't be surprised if we go with a pair of quarterbacks today. Yeah, they got two good ones. Uh, Priestley is the more of the standard drop back thrower. Rod Rutherford brings a different dimension. He's very, very quick. They'll run some option with him. It's a problem. And there's the head coach of the South Florida Bulls, Jim Levitt, 27 and 18. He's in his fifth year. Be careful what you wish for. He has wanted to be full-time Division I since the day he arrived <laughs> at the University of South Florida. He is there today taking on one of the storied programs in all of college football in the Pittsburgh Panthers and coaching on the other sideline for Pitt. Walt Harris, here's a guy that has been one of the hot names in major college coaching, was up for the Ohio State job last season, a former head coach at the University of Pacific. He's been an assistant at Ohio State with the New York Jets and Tennessee, known for the offense, so it should be a fascinating matchup today. Doug Graber. Well, I, I think it really will, and of course, uh, you know, no, no surprise here, Pitt is gonna run it and throw it. Uh, South Florida has to throw the football to be effective. And how about brand new Heinz Field? This is the third football game played in this brand new facility. We are basically right next to where the old Three Rivers Stadium used to be. And this is just a gorgeous facility. It seats about 65,000. And believe me, it is a hot, humid, sultry day. Not the type of day you would normally think about when playing football in Pittsburgh. No, this is a Florida day. And, uh, you know, Al, I coached a lot of games in the old uh, historic Pitt Stadium. They played in it 74 years. Uh, this is a little bit of an upgrade. <laughs> Definitely so. Now, the Bulls win the toss, but they defer to the second half. So Pittsburgh and its offense, an offense that ran up some 414 yards in offense a week ago against Eastern Tennessee State, will start things off. Santiago Gramatico will kick things off for the South Florida Bulls. Back to receive, it'll be Torrey Cox and Shantae Spencer for the University of Pittsburgh. 
Cox at the bottom of your screen. And a, Cox had a good return last week. He's the threat. And this is a pooch kick. South Florida with the surprise. And the Bulls recover inside the 30-yard line. How about Jim Levitt coming out and on the reception there. It is Maurice Tucker. A big surprise by Jim Levitt and the South Florida Bulls. Well, that takes a lot of guts as the head coach to call this on the opening play. Take a look at it here. They spotted a soft spot. You can see it right there. There's the soft spot. That's great execution by Gramatica and the coverage by Maurice Tucker. Uh, that is a terrific game plan thought. It is basically an onside kick. When you recover that football, it's a live football. So South Florida has it first and 10 from the 29-yard line. And this brand-new offense, it's a spread offense, never goes to a huddle, led by Markwell Blackwell, threw for two long touchdown passes last week against the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Blackwell quickly to the air. There's Rubin over the 25-yard line, and he is hit immediately. Among the tacklers for Pittsburgh, Lewis Moore. Here's a look now at the starters for the South Florida Bulls. The offensive line, really the only familiar face up there, Jimmy Fitz. He's a senior out of Bradenton. The backs and receivers, Brewer had a fine game in his debut. DeAndre Rubin, the man to keep an eye on, he is the big play weapon for the South Florida Bulls. Again, the shotgun for the Bulls. Gain of six yards on the play, second down and four. Blackwell, trouble with the snap, in trouble. And it is picked off by Pittsburgh. Sitting back in coverage for Pittsburgh. Mark Paco, and he picks off the Andrew Rubin, but there's a flag down on the field. Well, it all starts with a bad snap, and now Markwell kind of lost his poise. It was a blitz. That was a blitz by Pitt, which they picked up, but that's a shame to really lose that great field position. And that, that, that's one of the problems with this offense is the snap from center. It's a lot of pressure on the center. He's got to make good snaps 70 times or 80 times in a game, and that's, that's kind of tough. It puts a lot of pressure on the young center. Priestley last week throws for 134 yards and a touchdown. Now he also ran 85 yards for a touchdown, one of the longest touchdown runs in Pitt history. So Priest also... Priestley, rather, also with the no huddle offense and also in the shotgun. First and 10 at the 20. This is the freshman running back with the big gain over the 26 yard line, Raymond Kirkley. Now the starting lineups defensively. First offense for Pittsburgh, Brian Anderson, the big mammoth junior there at tackle, 6'5, 310 pounds. And Kirkley, the freshman running back who just carried for an eight-yard gain. Once again, Antonio Bryant not playing in this game. He's a Heisman hopeful. Out with a bad ankle. From the shotgun, Priestley. With time. Was trying to hit Lamar Slade. Bulls in coverage and complete. And that'll set up third down. Both teams going with a no-huddle spread. Now here's a look at the defense for the South Florida Bulls. Chris Daly, a very impressive opening game. Six tackles on that defensive line. Linebacker Kawika Mitchell, the number one tackler from a year ago, had nine tackles and a fumble recovery. And they're in the defensive backfield. Maurice Tucker, who recovered the onside kick on the opening kickoff. Third down and very short at the 28th. Kirkley hit behind the line of scrimmage. Here come the Bulls, and they're all over Kirkley. Kirkley with a big loss back to the 15-yard line. You name him, he was in there for South Florida. Maurice Tucker, Kawika Mitchell, all leading the way for this defense of South Florida. Boy, and I'll tell you what, th this, uh, this young running back, Kirkley, really has some strength and balance because, uh, you know, he really almost came out of this. That's amazing. And great pursuit by South Florida is what saved him. Tucker is the guy that saved the day because he had a lot of room out there. Into punts for Pittsburgh. Andy Lee back to receive. DeAndre Rubin standing at his 40. And the Bulls nearly get to that. Very high punt. Rubin calls for the fair catch at the 46-yard line. And the Bulls will have excellent field position of 38-yard punts. 
Well, 43 left to go in the opening period. We're scoreless. Markwell Blackwell leading the Bulls offense back on the field. He threw an interception the last time he had the football. Blackwell on the rollout. Finds her at the 45, pushed out of bounds near, mir, mir, <laughs> near midfield. And it's a gain of four. Here's a look at the defensive starters for the Pitt Panthers. This is a defense. They had 35 sacks a year ago. Brian Knight, one of the key defenders up front. Linebackers Gerald Hayes, 14 tackles last week against East Tennessee State. Ramon Walker, also a big time player defensively for the Bulls. Blackwell hits Rubin. That appears to be good for a first down. So Rubin and Blackwell hit, hook up for the first time today. Torrey Cox to tackle for Pittsburgh. All no huddle offense, all called from the sideline. It's really an amazing thing to watch. And for the most part, the Bulls will always go from the shotgun. Vince Brewer, left side, gets good blocking, takes it over the 40-yard line before he's brought down by Gerald Hayes. Again, Hayes, the leading tackler a year ago for Pittsburgh. And there you see Rod Smith. There he is signaling the formation and the play. The whole offensive football team will watch him and get it. And then Markwell, of course, is a guy that has to make an audible if necessary. Second down and five. Blackwell with room, decides to run, gets a block from Iskra, and he's very close to the first down. Yeah, I, I depended on the spot. I, I, it's it's going to be very, very close, Al. You called it, and I think we're going to get a measurement. Nope, first down. So the Bulls put together back-to-back -to -back first downs. Now, defensively, this Pittsburgh defense, seven sacks against East Tennessee State last week, gave up only 79 yards on the ground, 101 yards passing, so Pittsburgh has not allowed a team to run for 100 yards in four straight games. From the 30, first and 10. Audible. Blackwell, quick pass. Ruben at the 25, and he's nailed. And, and that's really the key right there, Al. You called it quick pass because uh, the South Florida staff feels they have to have the ball out of Markwell's hands in about 2.7 seconds most of the time against this great Pittsburgh front. That was 2.0. Gain of seven yards on the play. Already a third catch on this drive for DeAndre Rubin. Brewer again tries to sift his way through. And again, he is close to a first down. Brandon Williams among the tacklers for Pittsburgh. And that's a key element of this offense. Now they have two tight ends on the field, and Pitt has a nickel defense. Their Pitt is trying to substitute right now, and they're all screwed up. Now, when you have the two, two tight ends like this, you would think you could run the football against this defense. That's exactly right. Third down and short. Here's Brewer. Very close. Did he get it? Gerald Hayes, I again, the All-American linebacker with the big hit for four. Pittsburgh. It's going to be really within inches here, I think. This is very, very close. Yep, they're going to measure this time. But that's one of the interesting facets because South Florida all of a sudden stuck two tight ends on the field. Pitt had their dime defense out there, and then it was too late for them to substitute. That's the whole idea. I'm guessing, thanks to my LASIK, this is going to be a good first down. Look at that. By an inch. Well, I'll tell you what. You, how hey, about that? You got it, brother. You're amazing. <laughs> very, very impressive start for South Florida. You know, I mean, it's amazing. These young kids up here, they're doing a heck of a job. The third first down on this drive. Remember, they opened the ball game with an onside kick. The Bulls recovered, then turned the football over, but they marched right down the field here. Their third straight first down at the 21-yard line. First down and 10. Four wide receivers for the Bulls. Blackwell wide open, Iskra. And Iskra, if that pass had been on target, Iskra could have come very close to the end zone. And of course, so that was a, a, a corner blitz that they ran. And, and the blitz uh, was successful because he forced him to throw the ball. Now here's Rod Smith giving the next play and the Second formation. Game, Again, four wide receivers on the field. Look at the way that South Florida just spreads everybody all across the field. Here comes a blitz. Blackwell hits Rubin 
at the 15 yard line. Boy, you can hear the hitting down there. Shante Spencer just nailing DeAndre Rubin. And that pass was away in 2.6 seconds. Take a look at it right here. Just a quick hitch by Rubin. And the ball's out of his hands, and it's there on time. Excellent. That's exactly what the Bulls have to do against his defense. Blackwell in trouble. Puts it up for grabs. Ruben has it. Touchdown. South Florida, 14 yards, and the Bulls strike first. What a great job by Markwell Blackwell. I mean, they had him dead to rights in the backfield. And I, how he knew Ruben was going to be there, I don't know. But it was a great play by Blackwell and Ruben teammates since they were in grade school. Take a look at it right here. How does he get this football away? And again, how does he know that Ruben will be in the neighborhood? It's a 14-yard touchdown, their third touchdown hookup on the season. Santiago Gramatica into attempt the point after, and it's good. And don't look now, but the South Florida Bulls jumping on a team that many believe is a top 25 team in the Bulls. Take a 7-0 lead, and Jim Levitt is happy with the results. DeAndre Rubin with a third touchdown catch on the season. This one good for 14 yards. Rubin so far today, five catches for 38 yards and that drive. 10 plays, 54 yards, and Jim Levitt's young football team has come out swinging. Here's a look one more time at that touchdown pass. It's a, an amazing athletic play by Markwell <laughs> Blackwell. Look at all the Pitt Panthers in the neighborhood, but it's Rubin that comes down with it. You know what, when you play with a receiver like that since you're uh, about 12 years old, you kind of get a little chemistry going, huh? <laughs> that's got that's more than chemistry. That's called ESP. They, they played in high school, they played in little league football. Gramatica kicking off. And Pittsburgh will take it at the 20-yard line. That was Shante Spencer receiving. And so for the second time today, Pittsburgh will get the football. There's David Priestley. Again through for th 134 yards and a touchdown last week. Ran 85 yards yeah, for a touchdown. Of, 15 out of 20. And look at this. Uh, Pitt is having the same attack. They're huddling on the sideline. They're going to run on the field. Uh, they're really running a spread offense. Well, they exactly. toyed with this same spread offense throughout the uh, spring practice and early part of preseason. And my, maybe they're trying to give South Florida a little taste of their own medicine. That's an audible by Priestley. And Kirkley tries to run against his defense. But Emerson Morris is in the backfield almost as Kirkley gets the football. No gain on the play. Yeah, and, and that, that's simply the, they're, what they're doing is they're counting the box, counting the defenders in the box for a runner pass. We'll call it a loss of one on the play. Priestley gets nailed. Coming in to make the play for the South Florida Bulls, Maurice Jones. And the Bulls defense is just sending this offense for Pittsburgh backwards. Well, the advantage for South Florida is that they see this offense all the time, all through the spring and everything else, so they're ready for it. Boy, that's, he's just totally unblocked from the outside. That's an assignment bust by Pitt. A loss of 10 yards on the play, third down and 20. Now this Bulls defense has to slam the door when it's smelling blood like this. Well, this is tough to convert, no question about that. Third and 20. Priestley in trouble again, gets away from Mitchell, nearly picked off by the Bulls coming up. That was J.R. Reed. He was playing center field, came out of nowhere like a heat-seeking missile and nearly picked that ball off. Uh, Kawika Mitchell, uh, or is it's Daly or Mitchell? I can't exactly see. We it got appears to be Daly is down on the field. That's a great break on the ball by Reed. Uh, you know, South Florida is a 22-point underdog in this football game, Al Keck. And uh, boy, what a start for them against uh, this pit, the storied pit program. There was a flag down on the play, roughing the passer called Clark. on the South Florida Bulls, and that hurts because that. instead of third down and 20, now it would have been fourth down. Now it's an automatic first down from the 25 yard line. That's a 30 yard penalty right there. That really, really, really hurts. And you lose the football as well. 
At the 25, first and 10, Kirkley will try it again, and Kawika Mitchell pulls him down. The original hit by Emerson Morris. You know, th this South Florida defense, well, I'll tell you one thing, that they can run, and they got four outstanding corners that can play, and their linebackers are experienced and better players. And if they can hang in there up front against the pit team, they'll be in good shape. Second down and seven. Three wide receivers for the Panthers. Again, they're playing without their main man, Antonio Bryant. Again, they'll try the running game and very little running room for Mike Jemison. Sharon Pearson, the tackle for South Florida, and these big fans getting a little bit upset, but I'll tell you what, Rick Kravitz has done a great job with his defense today for South Florida. Would you say these pit pans are not very patient? Would that be a good word? <laughs> that could be God, very true. Put them on the, on the second series of the game. Third down and six. The Bulls had him in third and 20 a few seconds ago, but a penalty gave Pitt a first down from the shotgun. Officially with time. Nearly picked off. Again, Maurice Tucker. Boy, has he played a ball game already or what? Uh, I'll tell you what, they're going to learn. You better be careful when you throw the ball around number 21. The transfer from Indiana, he played, he started at Indiana, transferred to South Florida. He's one of the outstanding corners in this program. They got four corners at South Florida that can play for anybody, in my opinion. Pass intended for Lamar Slade. DeAndre Rubin back to receive, standing at his 30, and back to punt Andy Lee. South Florida with the lead at 7-0. Very high punt. Rubin calls for a fair catch at the 26-yard line. So the Bulls, again, not bad field position. They'll start at the 26. A 45-yard punt. The Bulls lead 7-0. The University of South Florida football on Fox Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. A beautiful day here in Pittsburgh. Very warm and nobody's hotter right now than the South Florida Bulls. A 7-0 lead at Pittsburgh. Yeah, and this Pitt defense has 10 of 11 starters back. They were 23rd in the nation last year in scoring defense. I mean, this is an outstanding defense. And you mentioned they had 35 sacks a year ago to lead the Big East, and that ain't a bad football conference. Blackwell going deep, looking for Iskra out of bounds. Sean Robinson in coverage for the Panthers. And again, uh, that was a full-scale blitz. Uh, they picked it up, but they could not make the throw and catch. And here Black we go. Blackwell is now six for nine for 42 yards. Second down and 10. Blackwell, quick pass, he's got Hurd. Hurd at the 35 when he's tripped up there. Now, what's happening? Watch it right here. You see Pitt bringing the pressure from the slot side of the formation. That's because they're trying to contain the sprint out. And if he breaks that tackle, he's got a huge game. Pittsburgh gave up only 12 first downs last week, and the Bulls are already off and rolling with the fourth first down. Quick pass on the opposite sideline is complete again. Brandon Williams on the coverage, and Ryan Hearn the catch from that, the University of South Florida. That ball was gone from his hand. Watch this. This ball is gone in 1.8 seconds despite an off-kilter snap. So Mark Quell's doing a good job of getting the football out of his hands. Gain him six yards on the play. Second down and four. Blackwell, little trouble with the snap again. Hearn fighting for a first down, and he appears to have it, and he's pulled out of bounds. Mark Ponko, who had an interception earlier in the ball game, knocks Hearn out of bounds, but not before the South Florida Bulls get another first down. Blackwell, so far, 9 of 12 for 64 yards in the passing department. And they, they, you just saw Rod Smith signal in the play, and he's under center now this time. Near midfield, first and 10. The Bulls already lead 7 0. Derek Rocker finds a lane, fights his way near the 40 yard line. Big hit by Ramon Walker. Walker had 11 tackles and a pick last week. 
in the victory over East Tennessee State. Yeah, and, uh, and of course, Ramon Walker is a Thorpe candidate, an All-American candidate. Watch him come up and make that hit right there. He is really, really a very, very good football player. Definitely will play pro football. Gain of nine yards on the play, second down and one. If he doesn't make that tackle, Rackard would still be running. Blackwell, all kinds of time looking deep for Ruben. Ruben had it in his hands. Jonte Spencer in coverage had help as well. And Ruben may be talking to himself here because he had an opportunity. Yeah, and this, this ball was away in about three seconds. But again, watch Ruben here. He's watched his burst down the sideline and he can separate right at the end right there. Oh my lord. Mm. I mean, a 14 to nothing lead at Pitt, that would have been Could a little... Could you imagine? Yeah. You know, th this looks like a totally different offense this week. Uh, that They looked very unsettled, unsure of themselves last week. Uh, very, very confident offense in this game. Big call, third and one, quarterback sneak! Ruben, or excuse me, Blackwell, appears to have the first down. And he came very close to breaking that. Yeah, I did. And, and, and watch, and as, if we get the uh, replay here, we're going to see it. Uh, good push by the left side of the offensive line. Just uh, tripped up. That Snell Grove and the Sparrowhawk really did a good job. This Bulls offense on the move. Rackard finds some running room, gets up to the 35-yard line. He runs over Brandon Williams. Williams with help from Ramon Walker. But another good gain on first down. That's been the key for this offense today. They're chewing up yards on first down, setting up second and third and shorts. Absolutely right. And uh, there's been some real gashes in that Pittsburgh front. Already six first downs today for the Bulls. Another freshman, Brian Fisher, on the reception. Gerald Hayes stops him for Pittsburgh. Now that last pass was away in 1.39 seconds. First and 10. Watch it. You're not going to get the quarterback. If he gets the ball out of his hands that fast, they're not going to get to him. First down at the 29. Running for the first time today, Clinton Crosley. Crosley, the freshman from South Sumter. Had his moments against Northern Illinois, also had a crucial fumble that kind of opened the door for the Huskies. But Jim Levitt not losing any confidence in his young running back. He's got a world of talent. He's just a young freshman. He's got a world of talent. Second down and seven. Blackwell under pressure. He's got Hearn, and again, the South Florida Bulls nearly pull in a second touchdown pass. Sean Robinson, one-on-one -on -one coverage but Hearn had the opportunity. Excellent read of the blitz, excellent read by the quarterback and the receiver. Just a that much overthrown. Boy, that's a great job though, I'll tell you. Uh, if I'm the pit defensive staff, I'm a little bit leery about blitzing this offense. Well, it's obvious that South Florida is setting the tempo in this ball game, both offensively and defensively. Third down and seven, and the crowd here at Heinz Field trying to help its defense. Movement up front. This could be a crucial call. Blake. Claude Harriet came charging through. Was he pulled off? No, I really think they were trying to draw them off sides, and I think they were successful. See what the call is. Dead ball, off sides. Yep. Defense, five yard penalty. First down. So South Florida's offense continues yep. to chew up first downs. And a, a very subtle thing, the center there just bobbed his head a little. And that's what happens when you run the shotgun offense. The defense gets used to him taking a look and then snapping. And they did that on purpose to draw them off sides. Walt Harris in his fifth year as head coach. This is and not exactly Florida, what he had in mind, is Absolutely. It? The South Florida Bulls call a timeout. The heat is definitely going to be cranked up in Raymond James Stadium in Tampa when USF takes on the Liberty Flames game day, October 27th, 7 o'clock only on Fox Sports Net. Jim Levitt's team came out from the opening kickoff 
and dictated the pace of this contest. They started off with an onside kick that they recovered, and even though Markwell Blackwell throws an interception two plays later, the Bulls have not backed down a bit. That opening onside kick or bloop kick, whatever you want to call it, that set the tone because right away the head coach is saying, hey, we're here to win this game. We're not here to play it close. We're here to win. And they set the tone with that play. And I'll tell you, Pittsburgh has been on their heels ever since. That's a gutsy call by Jim Levitt to start the game that way. And I cannot tell you how much more at ease this offense is uh, than they were up at Northern Illinois. They look very, very hesitant at that football game. And really, the biggest difference I see is in Markwell Blackwell. That was his 15, 68 yards. He's got the touchdown and the pick. Now, remember, all those other yards, all the other stats there came after the interception. And the other key stat, seven first downs so far for the South Florida Bulls. They've yet to punt the football. When you run this offense, you have to play throw and catch. And, and you just cannot afford to have drops and, and bad throws. And they haven't had any. Third down and two. The Bulls three for three on third down. A huge play in this game, even though we're still in the opening period. Play action. Ruben runs the other way, and he has all kinds of room. Gets down to the 15-yard line. That's good for a first down. Brandon Williams with the touchdown saving tackle. Great call by offensive coordinator Mike Hobby. They've been blitzing him. That was another fold go run blitz. Caught him in it with the naked. Now here's the next play coming from Rod Smith. Here, watch the blitz, and boy, they have absolutely nobody to contain Blackwell. Eight first downs for the South Florida Bulls. Again, we've got 337 left to go in the opening period. At the 15, remember they already have a 14-yard touchdown pass already in this quarter. Blackwell gets it away quickly, tries to hit Ruben. Ruben had to come back for it, and it's incomplete. Yeah, that's the first throw that's been just a little bit off target. I don't know if the route was wrong or the throw was just off. But again, on these quick throws, you got to play throw and catch. That would have been a great catch by Ruben had he made it. Now, this time, South Florida's got, of course, four wide receivers on the field. Spread it out. They got three uh, to Blackwell's right, as you see to the top of your screen, and one single receiver to the left with one-on-one -on -one coverage. And that's Ruben. Watch him go to Ruben here. I would bet on it. Second and long from the 15-yard line. Bulls lead 7-0. Blackwell. He's got Ruben. Ruben. Another touchdown for the South Florida Bulls. This time, 15 yards. And listen to the boos here at Heinz Field. And that's exactly what they did out. They put the triple to the wide side of the field, isolated Ruben. As soon as Markwell Blackwell saw that he had one-on-one -on -one coverage, uh, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to cover that guy one-on-one. -on -one. That was a great audible. Gramatica in to make it 14 nothing. Look at Dano. The South Florida Bulls have jumped on the Pitt Panthers for a 14-0 lead, and the fans here in Pittsburgh very unhappy with their Panthers. Pittsburgh coming in, 1-0, an easy victory over East Tennessee State, and this crowd is stunned here at the University of Pittsburgh. Al, as this score is flashed in scoreboards across the country as it's being done right now. Now, you know, Pitt is ranked number 29 in the nation. South Florida is ranked 116 out of 117 teams. But I'll tell you what, the, the talent on this South Florida team is there. And here's here's DeAndre Rubin. Look at the numbers. Uh, this guy's a real talent. Already six catches, 53 yards. The two touchdowns now has four touchdowns in two games. Now, the drives. You know, normally this offense you wouldn't think would eat up time, but they've eaten up three minutes, nine seconds in their opening touchdown drive, three minutes and 43 seconds, driving 73 yards for a touchdown on that drive. And Walt Harris has to be talking to himself. Next, their next ball game, they've got the UAB from Conference USA, and UAB runs a similar type of offense here. Yeah, but I, I don't think that many teams, uh, you know, have the explosiveness at wide receiver and speed that South Florida has. This is Cox at the goal line. And he finds a lane. Quick feet, but he's nailed at the 19-yard line. Brian Fisher 
among the tacklers, along with Sidney Simpson for the South Florida Bulls. How about that? 73 yards in 14 plays. Three minutes and 43 seconds. Ruben, his second touchdown reception on the day. Yeah, and they converted three key third downs on that drive, one of them on the boot. Now, you know, the Pitt team has got the cool mist on the sideline, uh, which on a hot day like this helps. South Florida, interestingly enough, they do not have it on their sideline. <laughs> and you know, Jim Levitt's saying, we don't need no stinking air conditioning. No, we're used to this. We're used to this. This is a typical Florida afternoon. From the shotgun, first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Pitt has had horrible field position all day. Priestley will take off. Gets near the 25-yard line before he is it's nailed Priestley by Maurice Ballard. Jones. Jones already has a huge sack in this game. Stop was made by Jones. And, uh, you know, the uh, Pitt coaching staff, I talked to them this week, and they were concerned with these South Florida corners. Let's take a look at the replay here. That's a double zone to that side, and they had the uh, receiver totally shut off. Gain of four yards on the play, second down and six. South Florida with the 14-0 lead against a Big East team. Priestley, all kinds of time, finds his receiver. And Pitt gets its second first down today, <laughs> and the crowd a little upset with the way that the Panthers have played. Slade on the reception and a first down. Now the other first down that Pittsburgh had came on a penalty. Right. That was against, uh, that was uh, South Florida was in a zone defense and that's that's what's called the smash corner combination and they read it and hit the, uh, hit the smash route. At the 31 yard line, first down and 10 for Pittsburgh. Zone again. Priestley looking for help, has his receiver again. It's late, and that's good for back-to-back -back first downs. And they hit the in route against the zone coverage. And, uh, you know, I think that the, that was uh, Lamar Slade, by the way. Watch, you see the uh, three-deep zone here, and they just simply uh, run up and down the sideline, create an opening, and hit the in route against it. J.R. Reed, the tackle for South Florida. Really the first time all day that Pittsburgh has been able to move the football against the South Florida defense. First and 10, Priestley going deep. Looking for English, knocked away. How about that defensive play by Bernard Brown? And what a great story here, Doug Graber. Here's a guy that was redshirted a couple years ago because they wanted his experience for this year. Then he goes out before spring practice and breaks his hip. And here he is back making big plays for the Bulls. That's a great play by Bernard, and what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful young man he is, and I'm so happy he's been able to recover. And I don't know if he's still 100%, but he's getting close to it. Second down and long for Pittsburgh. The Panthers trail 14-0. The pitch, Kirkley has nowhere to run, and how about Sherrod Pearson with the big time hit? Sherrod Pearson is really going to be fun to watch here the next uh, few years. He's a sophomore. He's wa watch his speed right here. Watch Sherrod Pearson right here. Watch his speed. Six. Came from the opposite side of the field, Doug. He runs 4-4. He's a defensive end. He runs 4-4. <laughs> he I mean, runs 4-4 at 6'3", 240. Yeah, and, and his strength is just amazing. Five carries for Kirkley, and he has a negative two yards. Look at that big difference in offense so far today. Priestley finds his receiver at midfield. Has complete to Yogi Roth. Yogi Roth on the reception. And that was a zone blitz by South Florida, and they couldn't quite get to him, and that was Kawika Mitchell that had the flat there. I tell you, they, the one thing they have not been able to get to the quarterback, that's the first time he's even really been uh, close. Steps out of bounds right there. Good Fourth call by the Fourth down and four. And Pittsburgh puts his punt team on the field, and the crowd is booing here. Now, this is a tough audience up here. They a third punt today for Andy Lee. This is not exactly what they had in mind. Ruben back to receive at his 10. Beautiful punt. And Ruben will call the fair catch. And the ball sneaks into the end zone, so the Bulls will get it at the 20-yard line, a 48-yard punt for Andy Lee and the Pitt Panthers. Now, here they are on the sideline. The whole offense is over there. Now, if you're the defensive coach, uh, you don't know what's going to come on the field. They might send four wide receivers, five. They might send two tight ends. 
So uh, you have to put your defense out there and you're not sure you're gonna get the matchup you want. Markwell Blackwell has led the Bulls to a pair of touchdowns. Both touchdowns to DeAndre Rubin, a 14-yarder, and then a 15-yard touchdown pass. And the Bulls have been able to move the chains here with 54 seconds left to go in the opening period. Again, they lead 14-0. From the shotgun, Blackwell gone deep again. This time looking for Iskra, and he simply overthrows him. Coverage Blackwell down there by Ramon Walker and also by Sean Robinson. And of course, uh, they have, uh, they've knocked Blackwell down. I, on my count, he's been knocked down six times today now. Uh, that, that's the one danger in this offense. Your quarterback is gonna take some shots back there after he delivers the ball. Here's the pressure right here. The ball's, ball's gone right there, and there's the hit. Joe Conlon on the hit, and it's amazing. He basically threw that off his back foot and put it 50 yards in the air. Ruben again. Was he inbounds? Yes, sir. And that's close to another first down. Tory Cox on coverage against Ruben. And Ruben has put together an afternoon worth of work here in the opening period. This ball was gone in 2.00. You can't get to him. A great timing on the outcut. Nine first downs in the opening period for the South Florida Bulls. Again, Pittsburgh gave up 12 all of last week. Now you've got two tight ends on the field. At the 31, Brewer right up the gut. Dan Stevens, the tackle for Pittsburgh. You know, th this is the biggest surprise to me that they've been able to run the football as well as they have. I mean, folks, this is one of the, I mean, 10 of 11 starters back. This is supposed to be one of the best defenses in America. Once again, they've gone four consecutive games without giving up. 100 yards on the, on the ground to any team. Yeah, they, they're definitely on their heels uh, defensively, no question about it. 13 seconds left to go in the opening period, second down and eight. Screen pass, and what a big defensive play. Coming up to make the play, Brian Beneke. He smelled the screen and snuffed it out. Well, this is a... This is another blitz. And that's the end of the opening period. And what an opening period for the South Florida Bulls. They lead at Pittsburgh 14 nothing. DeAndre Rubin with a pair of touchdown catches today. And the Bulls leading 14 nothing. Broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Fox Sports Net Florida by the University of South Florida solely for the entertainment of our audience and a reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Fox Sports Net Florida is prohibited. Third down and long for the South Florida Bulls. The Bulls four for four today on third down. The Bulls have already ran up nine first downs today against this pit defense. Yeah, and, and the pace of this South Florida offense is also uh, really hurt Pitt. I mean, they're just totally out of sync, and that's really what this offense is designed to do. You can't get your right personnel on the field. They go at such a fast pace, you're not used to it. Third down and 10 at the 31-yard line. Here comes a blitz. Blackwell with Todd. He's got Iskra, and he had him wide open. Iskra had beaten William Ferguson. And he had nothing but clear sailing in front of him. That's the third time today that the Bulls had an opportunity on a long pass. Took the words right out of my mouth, and I'll tell you what, it just, and all of them have just been slightly overthrown. They're making the right reads. They're doing everything right. They just got to play throw and catch. And for the first time today, Devin Sanderson is on the field, the punt for the South Florida Bulls. Shante Spencer back to receive. It's a very low, very short punt. But the Bulls are getting a bounce. And Pittsburgh will have its best field position today at the 35-yard line, at least best field position to begin a drive. It's a 34-yard punt. And uh, Sanderson really had to get that ball off because there was a mistake in the protection up front, and uh, there was a guy coming scot-free from his left-hand side. I, I kind of think in my heart, that Pitt is making a mistake trying to run this no-huddle spread offense against South Florida. 
If I'm Walt Harris, I line up a couple tight ends and a couple backs, and I run it right at them. Because Pittsburgh is bigger, stronger, more experienced. Absolutely. In the South Florida defense, they've got speed and quickness, and they've seen this offense. They see this offense every day in practice. Exactly. First and 10 at the 36. Kirkley is nailed. Greg Walls. Anthony Williams. They have a bull sandwich. <laughs> well, South Florida is absolutely shocking uh, the Pitt football team and also they're shocking the Pitt fans. And again, there's the replay and absolutely no place to go. They know this offense like the back of their hand. They know it. Kirkley, six carries, a negative four yards. He ran for 90 yards last week against East Tennessee State. Again from the shotgun. Priestley, with time, dumps it off. Walls again on the tackle. Gain of four yards on the play. Kawika Mitchell also went on a stop for the South Florida Bulls. And there's Rick Kravitz, who's put together the game plan on this defense for South Florida, and it's worked so far. Yeah, and I'll tell you, between he and uh, Wally Burnham, co-defensive coordinators, they have a great, great plan against Pitt today. That's obvious. I'm a little bit nervous because they have not been able to put any pressure on the passer up to this point. Third down and seven. Priestley with time. All that a coverage sack. Excellent coverage downfield by the Bulls secondary. And Emerson Morris takes advantage. Okay, you're going to see a blitz come here now. You see the blitz from the uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, Kawika Mitchell. Pretty darn good coverage. They had a double on Slade. No place to go with the football. Again, excellent coverage by the South Florida Bulls. Andy Lee will punt again. DeAndre Rubin standing at his 25-yard line. The Bulls lead 14-0, just underway here in the second period. Lee, a booming punt. Rubin makes a mistake by taking it back at the five-yard line, or maybe it isn't a mistake. How about that return <laughs> by DeAndre Rubin? A 61-yard punt, but Rubin still takes it out on the other side of the 25-yard line. 12.42 left to go. Jim Levitt, the Bulls, leaving, leading 14. Very quiet here at Heinz Field. The South Florida Bulls has taken this crowd right out of the ball game. Two touchdowns for this man, DeAndre Rubin, who also had a big punt return right here. Watch here. Should he have made this catch or should he let this go into the <laughs> well, end zone? I, I think most coaches would say, I got it. I told you. Oh, oh, no, that's a good job. That's a good job. That's the way to go. <laughs> And he has better field position than, take, than taking it out to the 20-yard line. It's That's, now to 26, first yeah. and 10 from there. Standard rule of thumb is you never field the ball inside the uh, seven-yard line. Uh, but, you know, in, in his defense, you really get out of whack on a punt like that. You don't know exactly where you're at on the field. Again, a 61-yard punt. Boy, he, he, he's impressive. And these are impressive. 13 of 21, 94 yards, two touchdowns. Had a pick on his opening pass. It's been red hot ever since, and he's had some opportunities on some long balls. Another quick pass, complete at the 28-yard line. That, Huey Whitaker on the catch. Yeah, and that ball was gone in 1.79 seconds. That's a quick throw. Uh, the game that's being played here is they're reading the pit corners. If they're off in coverage, in cover three, they're going to hit those quick throws all day long. Blackwell on the rollout. Blackwell with time. Looking for the wide receiver. And he had it momentarily. Brian Fisher appeared to come down with the football, but was not able to hang on. Mark Ponko in coverage for the University of Pittsburgh. And I tell you, if Markwell Blackwell throws that ball earlier, they absolutely have Fisher up. They have him beat all the way. Good job of Fisher coming back for the football here. They're lucky they didn't call that a fumble. I mean, to me, that's a catch and a fumble. I, I don't it know about that It appeared he one. had feet down and had control. But still, it was a great play by Fisher to even make it possible by coming back to the football. Third down and seven.
Blackwell, Rubin. They've been playing catch all day. Another first down, 10 first downs for the South Florida Bulls and Rubin Burns, Torrey Cox. That's the second time now that they've gone to the outcut on third and long, and it was against a blitz. Well, oh, that is a wonderful, wonderful timing on the outcut and a great throw by Blackwell. Jim Levitt likes the way his team is responding. 109 yards passing, and add to that another 10 yards. The reception by Fisher, and this may be another first down. That ball was gone in 2.4 seconds. This is a team that had 35 sacks last year, had seven in the game last week. They can't get to them as long as the ball's coming out that fast. And they're going to measure this. It appears to be okay. about a foot shy. Well, maybe not a foot shy, but less than a foot shy. I don't think they have it. I'm, I'm becoming a bigger fan of LASIK surgery all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. Dr. Prado in Tampa. I'm working this. I'm working this LASIK stuff. <laughs> They'll be a sponsor. Okay, let's see. Oh, you know what? I was wrong. Yeah. My apologies. It's good for the first down. I, I thought it was short, too, to be very honest with you. So, uh, but uh, Jim Levitt will take it. Absolutely. And I'll tell you now, you've got uh, DeAndre Rubin out of the game, getting a little blow, and you've got number 15, Huey Whitaker, split in away from a triple, and he's 6'5", 225 wide receiver. Now, while Rubin has caught eight passes for 76 yards and two touchdowns, four other receivers have also caught passes for the South Florida Bulls. Here's the screen pass and the fumble. And that's the one thing this offense cannot afford to do. Brian Fisher on the fumble. And it goes over to the Pitt Panthers. Claude Harriet picks up the football. Also in there, Brian Smith. And we've got an injured player on the field. It appears to be a Pitt Panther. That's the one thing with this offense. The receivers uh, touch the ball so much that uh, they have to be just like running backs. I mean, that, that really was a running play. Uh, there's no difference here. If you watch Fisher right here, uh, too bad because this is really just a, a screen and the ball is stripped right there. Good job by the Pitt defense. And it was one turnover last week against Northern Illinois that opened the floodgates yeah, for the Huskies and that allowed the Huskies to they were down by 10 at the time and they came back and won the football game. Yeah and that one fumble last week turned the game around but you know I mean this is uh, this is football there's going to be turnovers in the game and this young young South Florida team has to develop their mental toughness to where they can deal with adversity. They have some right here. Let's see if the defense can respond. Joe Conlon one of the senior defensive linemen 6'5 290 leaving the field. And that's too bad because he is without question their best inside player. Big guy, 6'5", 290. He's really a force uh, inside for Pitt. So the offense of Old Harris with an opportunity, and really its best field position today at the 46-yard line. And a new quarterback, Rod Rutherford, coming into the lineup for the first time today. Pittsburgh said it would use two quarterbacks. Kirkley, the ball carrier, and again, not much there. No, so that's the slant play off the spread offense, and they have absolutely shut it down. All I don't think they've made a yard on that play all day. Rutherford last week, four of eight for 51 yards, a long of 21 yards in the passing department against East Tennessee State. Very athletic, very, very quick right from the Pittsburgh area here, heavily recruited. Rutherford again, this time in trouble, gets it away. The Bulls believe they got to Rutherford. But the pass is incomplete. All kinds of pressure by the South Florida Bulls. Maurice Jones. I thought this might have been a clip here right to the uh, left of your screen on Mitchell. Right now, yeah, just see the end of it. I thought that was a clip. But again, you see the quarterback's athleticism here. And, and absolutely, very, very good job of getting run down by Emerson, Emerson Morris. Morris. Excellent job. Third and long. Can the Bulls defense hold here after the turnover? Rutherford from the shotgun, under pressure. The pooch pass, it's called incomplete. It was more of a pitch. 
That's the shovel pass, and uh, you know it's either a hit or miss situation, and that was a definite miss. Tavares Jereniak putting the pressure on Rutherford. So Rutherford 0 for 2 coming in to replace David Priestley. And after the turnover, one yard of offense for Pittsburgh. And they punt it away very quickly. Ruben back to receive, calls for the fair catch. And this may work out for the Pitt Panthers. But a flag is down. This may have been roughing the punter. Well, this will be a very interesting call because uh, they sure got a great, great break on that bounce. The ball hit and kicked dead left. Officials are talking this one over. Here's the flag. Penalties is something that was definitely a problem for the Bulls at Northern Illinois. You can read Jim Levitt's yeah. lips saying it's on them. Take it back. And it is. And it is. It is on Pittsburgh. Boy, and I'll tell you that, that really hurts Pitt right there. They had him down on the six yard line, and now they got to punt it over. Jim says, yeah, it's against Pittsburgh. <laughs> Make him punt it again. Boy, and, uh, and uh, Lots has really, really punted extremely well today. Holding. Kicking chain. 10 yards penalty. Now they had him on the six yard line. Let's, let's see how much this penalty really, uh, really affects us. Lots has been very, very impressive so far. And I'll tell you, the one danger is if he out kicks the coverage with DeAndre Rubin back there, again, uh, I'd want him fair catching the football if I'm uh, Walt Harris because uh, he is so explosive. If he hits another booming punt and doesn't get good hang time with it, you better look out because that guy can take it the distance. Ball marked at the 36, Lee standing at his 22, Ruben standing at his 22 to receive. This one is very high, but it's shorter. Ruben does not call for the fair catch. Slips down, and that's the biggest break for the Pitt Panthers on that play because he had a lane. 39 yards on the punt, and the South Florida Bulls with the lead. 14-0 over the Big East and the Pitt Panthers. The South Florida offense already with 11 first downs. Talking about strategy on the sidelines. Again, they don't huddle. They'll come straight to the field at the 31-yard line and put the ball in play from there. Yeah, and, and the difference is, uh, again, the pit defense, they don't know what personnel they're going to send out there, so, you know, they just have to guess. Now, that penalty on that, that previous punt cost them 25 yards in field position. They had South Florida backed all the way up to the five-yard line. And let's not forget, they got that field position originally on a turnover. So the Bulls dodge a bullet there. First down from the 31. The spread out. Heard on the reception over the 35-yard line before he's bowled out of bounds. Ryan Hearn, a transfer from Campbellsville College in Kentucky. Have you heard of that one, Al? I have not heard of that one. Now you've got that, uh, you've got the triple up to the top of the screen, and you've got DeAndre Rubin one-on-one. -on -one away from the triple. That was Greg Fire, the offensive line coach. And a lot of room. Watch the quick pass to Rubin. I'm bet. Oh, boy. Movement up front for the South Florida Bulls in what was second down and four will now become second down and nine. Yeah, that was the young redshirt freshman, Derek Sorosi, guy from Titusville. <laughs> he, tried, he tried to hold it. Well, once when you're that big, when you're 6'6", 295, and momentum is against you, yeah. <laughs> you're a dead duck. <laughs> and, and you know, when you go from that two-point stance, that's it, such a, a natural thing to do to kind of start leaning a little bit. That's only the second penalty of the South Florida Bulls. Look at that, 172 yards of offense. Another quick pass, looking for Ruben. And that looked like a Nolan Ryan fastball. It just zipped right by Ruben. Shante Spencer in coverage. 
And, and there was something amiss in that play. Either Ruben didn't, uh, it was an audible and he missed it, or he didn't, they didn't, they weren't on the same page in reading the coverage because he was not ready for that ball. Okay, now you got two backs and three wide receivers in the game. I bet they're anticipating blitz. They want that second back in there for blitz protection. It's exactly what they're doing. Third down and nine. And you've got Ruben one-on-one -on -one against press coverage down here. And here comes the blitz. Ruben cannot hold on. Ball behind him. And that's one of the first three and outs for the South Florida Bulls. Shante Spencer, excellent coverage for Pittsburgh. And really, Al, that three and out was uh, directly because of that penalty. Nice job by Spencer. Ball could have been just a little bit off on the throw, but not bad, really. That's tough to time up against a uh, press coverage like that. Sanderson into punts. William Ferguson back to receive. A bad snap, but a beautiful punt by Sanderson. Ferguson at the 15, and he has a lane. Poor tackling by the Bulls. How about those quick feet? A 53-yard punt, but the Bulls have very little to show for it. And uh, the bad snap, uh, Sanderson is not the same punter that we saw last year, and I think it's because they're having some snapping problems. He can't, he can't get into any rhythm. Watch his snap is very low. It's a one hopper. Does a great job of getting it away. But all the timing's off, and there really wasn't much hang time on that punt, and that's what set up the return. And a good job by Pitt. They got two key blocks right at the point of return. An injured player for Pittsburgh now able to run off under his own power. Torrey Cox, corner. He's okay. So Pittsburgh with the football, first and 10 at the 40, and Rutherford back in at quarterback. He's replacing David Priestley. The Panthers have not been able to move much under Priestley. South Florida defense is really shut down. This pit offense. Play action. Rutherford keeps it. Gets around Kawika Mitchell. Rutherford, the ball carrier. Bernard, Bernard Brown, Brown, the tackle for South Florida. Brown. Yeah, and, and Kawika Mitchell had him dead to rights. He really did. He was unblocked on the corner. Did a good job. Good discipline. Stayed home. But uh, again, uh, Rutherford just has a, he's got a little burst. Gain of three yards on the play. Second down and seven. 927 left to go here in the first half. The thing about this South Florida offense, when they have the football, the clock does not move. With all the passing, that tends to lengthen the football game. That's absolutely right. Rutherford steps up. Kirkley with all kinds of room has a first down at the 45 yard line and a big tackle by Maurice Jones because Kirkley had a lot of green in front of him. Yeah, he really did, and this is really a good block downfield. Uh, you can't quite see it just up to the top, uh, to the right of your screen. Uh, the, the corner was blocked and knocked down, so they had a lot of running room. That was Maurice Tucker that got blocked. The first down for the Pitt Panthers. And that's really the only game that Kirkley's been able to make, and it comes on a pass. The Bulls have truly bottled him up. Kirkley again. Excuse me, that's another running back, Mike Jemison. Ball carried by Mike Jemison. That's the first that's time on the slant play, play today that they have had positive yardage on the play. They got about three and a half yards. Greg Walls, the tackle for South Florida. Jemison's a 225-pound freshman running back. They have two freshman running backs here. 220 and 225. Second down and seven. South Florida with the 14 nothing lead. The Bulls threatening blitz. They drop back. Rutherford incomplete. Had a receiver. RJ English was open. Pass incomplete. That'll set up third down and seven. 
The one thing that I'm concerned with, if I'm uh, Jim Levitt, is when they rush four against this pit offensive line, they have not been able to get close to the quarterback. And of course, Rick Kravitz right there, the defensive coordinator, is concerned with that too. They're going to have to blitz to get pressure on him. Third and seven. Rutherford, quick pass. Big hit by the Bulls. How about J.R. Reed just nailing the tight end, Chris Wilson. The crowd here in Pittsburgh thought that the play had been over. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at it. You're going to see a collision here. Uh, this is a close call right here. That could have been called because the ball was definitely over his head. Uh, he didn't do it on purpose. He did not see the football. He was playing the receiver. Andy Lee into punts on fourth down, fourth down and seven. The Bulls don't even have a receiver back there. And Lee punts it into the end zone. A missed opportunity there for the Pitt Panthers. South Florida with the 14-0 lead. South Florida looking for its opening victory of the season. And oh, how this would be a big one. South Florida, a 22-point underdog coming in, and the Bulls leading 14-0 here in the second. Now, USF aims to extinguish the Liberty Flames on October 27th at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. The University of South Florida Bulls lock horns with the Flames of Virginia. Don't miss our coverage right here on Fox Sports Net. Boy, how about that for a view here? Beautiful, beautiful setting here at the University of Pittsburgh. And, I bet and she's the brand got, new stadium. I bet she's got the radio on listening to this ball game. She may have turned the radio off by now. Doesn't want to hear this. The fans, for the most part, have been very quiet here at Heinz Field. Eight seconds on the play clock. This is Callum. The transfer from Florida State has plenty of running room over the 25-yard line. Quentin Callum, he's a sophomore from Lake City, was one of the top running backs in the state his senior year, Ramon Walker on the tackle. He's one of the many young running backs that Jim Levitt has to choose from. Yeah, between, uh, you know, Callum and, uh, and Crossley and Brewer, uh, they really are pretty well stocked there. Second down and two. Another quick pass, complete Iskra. And that's good for a first down. And that ball was gone in 1.67 seconds. How about 12 first downs for the South Florida Bulls already today? Again, Pittsburgh gave up 12 first downs last week against East Tennessee. Excuse me, it's now 13 first downs. And I'll tell you, Al, if Pitt does not start pressing with their corners, uh, they're going to be in for a long afternoon. Callum again with running room. Fights his way. Good for a first down over the 45 to the 47-yard line. And the Boo Birds are doing their thing. Claude Harriet, the tackle for Pittsburgh. And the fans here at Heinz Field very unhappy with the way their Panthers are playing. This is totally amazing. Now watch this young man keep his feet going here. I'm talking about Callum. And this is the slant play. Pretty well blocked up front. Watch right there. Boy, he had the, the knees up, and he was churning. Good for a first down. 14 first downs for the South Florida Bulls. Going deep again, looking for Ruben. There was some contact down there on coverage. Sean Robinson, no flag is down. There was a lot of contact, and I thought the football was in the air when that contact occurred, and that certainly threw the timing off on the go route. You can't quite see it. Contact occurred just a little bit before the uh, we, he came in our view, but there was some definite contact. Second down and ten. Blitz looks like a blitz. Five seconds on the play clock. Three, and the Bulls get it away just in time. Another quick pass, looking for Brian Fisher. Fisher was open at the 45-yard line, but passing complete sets up third down and long. 
Yeah, and, and that's the whole deal with this offense. You've got to play throw and catch. He had it wide open and he misfired. And Mark Wells got to make that throw because now you're setting up a third and ten. If he makes that, you're looking at maybe a third and two. And again, you're on the opposite side of the 50 yard line. If nothing else, you're winning the field position game with 638 left to go in the first half. Look at that difference. Two hundred three yards of offense compared to only 40 for Pittsburgh. Absolutely incredible. The pump fake. Blackwell going deep for Whitaker. First down and a flag is down inside the 20 yard line. Corey Cox on coverage. Was it interference or was it the fact that possibly Whitaker may have stepped out of bounds? Uh, I believe it's interference. They're calling interference against Pitt and that was another full blitz and Mark Well did a great job of hanging the football up there and letting the big guy come down with it. Pass interference, defense, penalties decline, first down. If I'm Pitt, I'm getting a little bit nervous about blitzing this Hurt South the Florida man. offense. I mean, they're getting hurt. Uh, they, they could have been hurt horribly in the first half. All right, let's see. Does he step out of bounds? Yes, he did. But, you know, in college football, it's, it's not the same rules in the pros. He was forced out there so he can come back in. At the 20, that's a 33-yard penalty. And Fisher drops the football at the 15. Brandon Williams on coverage. Remember, 2.7 is the magic number. That ball's got to be gone. And 2.7 in this offense, that was 1.95. Blackwell, 20 of 34, 166 yards. The two touchdown passes. Here's Ruben. Ruben with some room at the 10, spins away inside the 10 yard line. Another first down for the South Florida Bulls. That was the wide receiver screen ex executed absolutely beautifully. Uh, Pitt is lucky he didn't score right there. Another Pitt player is down. 16 first downs for the South Florida Bulls. Ruben, nine catches, 88 yards, two touchdowns, almost had number three right there. You see the screen to Ruben. Look at the, all the big guys uh, downfield. A lot of times <laughs> you get the big guys in space, a lot of times they don't make blocks, but they force people to run around them at least. I mean, those aren't great athletes out there, nimble footed guys, you know. There's offensive line coach Greg Fry. He was happy with that. First and goal from the nine. The Bulls on the run. Quentin Callum to the eight. Well, he a gain of a yard. He's a good, good looking athlete. He really is. I like, I like the looks of these young uh, running backs, Callum and, and Crossley both. And Vince Brewer, who was the starter coming in. Yeah, all of them are in that 205, 210 range, and they all have excellent feet, speed, and balance. Now, this is where you say this offense has problems yes. inside the 10 because they can't spread the field as much. Exactly. This is one area this offense is a little bit lacking. It's a tough situation in here for them. Three on the play clock. Will they get it off in time? They do. Quick pass. Looking for Iskra. The Bulls wanted a penalty, and Jim Levin on the opposite sideline cannot believe it. William Ferguson with the hit for Pittsburgh, and Levitt almost ran down to the 10-yard line. Well, let's take Upset a look with at that play. Did he make contact before the ball got there? It's close. Let's see if he did. Yeah, that's that's close. I mean, you got to give the defense a chance too. That, of course, coming from a defensive backs coach. You got to you got to give the secondary <laughs> its props. I've never seen real interference <laughs> in my life, honestly. 5-11 left to go before halftime. Third and goal. The screen pass. Ruben caught at the five yard line, but the Bulls at least will be in Gramatica field goal range right in the middle of the field. And here comes Santiago Gramatica. Uh, this was another wide receiver screen. This one here, uh, right there. That was a nice job by Fisher because if he'd have made that block, he'd have had a clip. Nice job of pulling off. This is marked at the 12 yard line. It'll be a 22 yard attempt and the Bulls would love to take a 17 nothing lead at this point. 
and he duck hooks it. A missed opportunity for Jim Levitt and the South Florida Bulls. Gramatica had hit his only field goal try at Northern Illinois, but he comes up short on this one. Well, you know, he's just a true freshman. Uh, he's got outstanding talent. We all know that. Uh, he, he's going to be a heck of a kicker, but I'll tell you, you're a freshman in this uh, environment. Uh, it's a little bit tough on you. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Let's take another look at this and see what happened. Looks like he came right over the top of it. Yeah, he sure did. Just like in the golf swing, he just hooked it. And you're looking at me like, Al, I've seen you do that. <laughs> Al, yeah. you know what he did, right, Al? <laughs> A lot of pressure on him, you know, coming to South Florida and, and uh, you know, of course, his two brothers have been so good that I told him, just relax, be yourself. So Pittsburgh will take over with David Priestley back in at quarterback. The Bulls threatening blitz. Priestley was not able to move this offense much. Here's a quick pass, complete, and the fumble. But the Bulls were not able to take advantage. Slade, they're saying it was a catch. Yeah, I, I think that's a good call. I mean, to me, that was pretty clearly a catch. Let's take a look at it. I mean, you know, you got to have, it's just a judgment call by the official. Yeah, that's a good call. The ball was stripped, stripped. Maurice Tucker on the hit. Second down and five. Four minutes left to go before halftime. By the way, at halftime, we'll have Leroy Selman. Talk to him about this fine ball game so far for the South Florida Bulls. Pass incomplete. Well, Jim Levitt is working hard out there, you know, and, and the key thing for him right now, he, he, cannot, get, he cannot allow his team uh, to be enamored with his 14 and nothing lead. They just have to keep going. They got to make it 21 nothing. They got to get to 28 nothing. That's exactly the attitude that you have to have. If you're going to get a huge upset like this, you have to have that mindset. <laughs> that says it all for all these Pittsburgh fans yeah, right now. Sure does. They all have very <laughs> upset looks on their faces. Third down and five. The screen pass, Kirkley is nailed at the line of scrimmage. How about the little guy coming up to make the tackle? Joe Morgan and Bernard Brown, both of them there in, in great shape, played good solid zone defense and really ran and got to the football. Got a little bit of pressure on the quarterback right here, which certainly helps. Back to punt, Andy Lee. It's a seventh punt today. He lettered basically in this first half. <laughs> sure did. He, he's been impressive. Lee has really been impressive in this half. Look and at, how about this? Wow. His neighboring Lane. Ruben calling the fair catch at the 35. And the Bulls Ruben will take it from there. 39-yard punt, but I think it went higher than 39 yards. Yeah, we lost sight of it up here through the upper deck. Now, 3.05 know, left to go in the first half, Doug Graber. If someone had told you coming into this game that the Bulls would be leading 14-0 against this team, we both would have been looking at each other. You know what's truly amazing? They're leading 14 to nothing. It should be 17 to nothing. And they've had two turnovers. I mean, it, this easily could be 28 nothing. And very, very quiet. How about that? Nail-biting time right yeah, now for Pittsburgh. Yeah, if, if, They're nervous. If I'm Walt Harris, I'm biting my nails right now. The Bulls already with 37 passes today. Their record for a game is 44. The blitz. Brewer turns the corner and out of bounds. Good gain on first down. It's Brewer. Yeah, and, and Pitt did something very, very smart on that play. Uh, you know, they've been getting hurt outside with the quick throws to the wideout, so they lined up in a what I call a double zone, a cover two look. Uh, you know, they showed that, and then they, here you see the corner backing out right there. Okay, and here's the slant, and well, that is very, very well blocked up front. Jimmy Fitz leading the way. You know, th this and off the uh, right guard. And another player hurt for the Pitt Panthers. Very slow getting, uh, very slow getting up, Ryan Smith. That's the third injury they've had here in this first half. That looks like a knee, that is not good. 
And that Pittsburgh defense has been on the field a long time today. Yeah, you know, the the South Florida offense uh, is, I. if you saw them play against Northern Illinois, you just absolutely cannot believe in 10 days, it, it looks like a different football team. They're very poised, and they're going against a great defense, and they're very poised. And uh, Blackwell is dramatically better. The receivers are better. They're playing throw and catch. Uh, they're running the football well, and this young offensive line uh, for South Florida has really, to me, been quite amazing in this football game. You got two redshirt freshmen in there, uh, Sorosi and Alex Heron at center, and uh, you know they're just doing a great, great job. You got Sparrow Hawk, a senior, Snellgrove, a junior, uh, Jimmy Fitz, of course, number 75, the senior. Second down and two. Three minutes left to go in the first half. The Bulls lead at 14 0. Crossley barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Gonna set up about third and one and a half, it looks like to me. Dan Stevens among the tacklers for Pittsburgh. And the other thing we need to remember with Pittsburgh, remember in preseason they were voted by the Big East media to be the third best team in the Big East behind Miami, rated number one in some polls, and Virginia Tech. So Walt Harris has a excellent football team here and this young South Florida Bulls team staring them right in the face. Now they are pressing the wide receivers here. That eliminates the quick throw. Two on the play clock and they get it off just in time. And with the press looking for Iskra and he just has it fall off his fingertips. Now, the problem there was he was trying to keep his feet in bounds and, and he just lost his concentration on the football. Mark Wells got to give him a little bit of more room. He's got to give himself more room to work with here on the sideline. Oh, oh. boy, a big time hit on the on Blackwell. Wow. He's a tough kid. Boy, he hangs in there pretty good. Gerald Hayes with the rip. Devin Sanderson back to punts. And that's a beautiful punt. At the five yard line, the Bulls are right there in coverage. A 50 yard punt for Devin Sanderson at a time when the Bulls truly need it. Now that's a horrible mistake by Pitt. That ball, he, he fielded that ball right at the six yard line. Uh, that ball should have been in the end zone. That was foolish. The tackle by Kenny Robinson of the South Florida Bulls, and the ball's marked at the 11 yard line, first and 10 for David Priestley. It's been a long first half. Yeah, and Priestley's going to be the quarterback here. And you know, as a coach, I really hate to switch quarterbacks back and forth during a game. I mean, I've had to do it at times when, you know, nobody really took the job, so to speak. But gee whiz, I'd like to have one guy and let him get into the rhythm of the game. 2:03 left to go in the first half. South Florida with the 14-0 lead. Movement up front. Chicoy Blunt came piling in. And he's saying that the tackle moved and uh, the official's going to make the call. Both sides. Oh. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. First well, let's take a look at it here. Let's see if we can see movement. I, I, don't, I think that's all on uh, Mr. Blunt. So instead of first and 10, it's now first and five from the 16. 2.03 to go here. This is a key, key series for the South Florida defense. This is an audible. Now they move. <laughs> that time, Pittsburgh did move. Okay, now we're back to first and 10. It looked like Mike Bosnick was on the move. You know, the guy that moved that would bother me, the wide receiver Dead jumped. Ball. Well start, offense, five yard penalty. First down. Right back to where we start. But I'll tell you, when a wide receiver moves, that gets me pretty hot as a coach because all he's got to do is look inside the football. He's not even he shouldn't even be listening to the Kings. Right here. Now it's back to first and ten from the eleven. Priestley steps up, gets it away. Good for a first down. Excellent catch, R.J. English. Has and I'm sure Pittsburgh would love to get some points on the board right before halftime. 
And of course, I'll tell you one thing, they're really missing Antonio uh, Bryant today, and they're missing their second flanker, uh, Darcy Levy, as well. So that's hurting this team right now. Priestley again with Todd. And another reception on the far side. And stops the clock. That's the key thing. Lamar Slade. Lamar Slade. Second and one. 137 left to go. Clock still moving. They're saying that Slade did not get out of bounds. Second down and two. Priestley looking deep. He's got a wide open receiver and oh. Wow. Bulls dodge a bullet there. Reed is, is in the neighborhood, but when I say neighborhood, that's a very uh, large neighborhood. This is a, we're gonna get a good look at this. This is a total bust on the coverage. Look at that. Yeah, the, that's the safety, really. The safety in the corner both busted because J.R. Reid was influenced by the crossing route and he took it man to man across the field. In the corner, looked like he thought he was gonna have help deep and there was no help there. Total coverage bust. Third down and two. Pittsburgh 0 for seven on third down. Kirkley on the reception. This is good for a first down. Pass, but the clock continues to run with 115 and counting. Kawika Mitchell in the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. Well, that's, that's the one difference in college football on a first and 10. And they do stop the clock. And the pros in the two minute, they don't at all. Well, Rick Kravitz has got to come up with a call here. Priestley fakes one way. Decides to take off. Pearson chasing him. And a good gain on first down. Plus, he stops the clock with 104 left to go in the first half. Now, last week, Priestley ran 85 yards on a naked bootleg for a touchdown. Yeah, he has decent speed. And South Florida came with a three man rush that time as the nose tackle peeled off on the back, on the flaring uh, back. That was uh, Kirkley. Second down and three. Three wide receivers, two backs. Priestley steps up, looking for a receiver. And the one thing that could kill the South Florida Bulls is giving up a big play, and they do it right there. 56 yards on the touchdown. Roosevelt Vines with the Otters. Now in, uh, and Maurice Tucker here gets caught looking back for the football. And he just runs right by him. Oh, boy, that is a horrible mistake in a two-minute situation. Vines, 56 yards on the touchdown reception. And that is the first play, literally, from this offense for Pittsburgh. That is a killer for South Florida. Lots on the point after is good. And Vines from Fort Lauderdale is able to get six against the old home states. We're going to take a look here, and again, you're going to see Maurice Tucker right here in his back pedal. He turns and, and he drifts inside, and then he just misjudges the ball right there and quit running. Oh boy, that! And Maurice Tucker has played so well. Uh, that's a horrible mistake, and that's really a technique mistake, Al. Again, we talked about the fact that with this offense, it makes the game longer. Now, with 56 seconds left to go in the first half. South Florida had dominated up to this point, and now Pittsburgh has to say, listen, as poorly as we've played, we're only down seven. Yeah, and South Florida easily, easily could have been up 20, 21. Yeah. yeah, I mean, who, who knows what the number would have been without the turnovers and the miscues. Well, uh, now, it, it, the key thing here is you have an offense that really, your, your base offense is a two-minute offense. Now, if they get decent field position after this kickoff, if I'm South Florida, I come right back at him. A good crowd today on a very sultry day. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Nick Lotz hit the point after, he will kick off. DeAndre Rubin and Ryan Hearn back to receive. 
Very high. Rubin takes it at the five. Has some trouble. And he's nailed very quickly. At the 15-yard line. Corey Humphreys on the tackle for Pittsburgh. So with 52 seconds left to go before halftime, and another player hurt. In fact, the player that made the tackle, Humphreys. And DeAndre Rubin is also down. That's the uh, scary thing for South Florida. We got two players down on the field. There's Rubin. You know, he had an ankle problem last year. I hope that's not a repeat. Looks like his left ankle to me. Boy, this would be devastating to lose that young guy. Let's take, a, let's take a look at this hit right in the middle of the screen. Let's see if we can see it right. Boom. And he must have uh, come down on that left ankle. Uh, Humphreys came down on it. Now, while South Florida here definitely wants to come right back at Pittsburgh, by the same token, they cannot afford a turnover here because the Panthers would be loving life with an opportunity to tie the game at 14. Right. 52 seconds, a lot of time with this offense. Now, the key thing here, though, to me, is the field position, Al. I mean, if they're out to the 30-yard line, I say, okay, boys, no huddle and let's go. And of course, you look at Walt Harris there talking to his wide receiver, English. But uh, if, if I'm Jim Levitt now and the ball's on the 15-yard line, I'm thinking just a little bit different about this situation. Pittsburgh has three timeouts remaining. I'm sure the Panthers would love to get another opportunity with the football. And you see Blackwell still looking to the sideline. To get the call from Rod Smith. Looks like he might have got the wind knocked out of him. Yep. Well, there's some violent collisions in this game. I'll tell you, it's a, uh, it's even scary. It's sc it is scary as a coach sometimes. Uh, these, as these players get faster and stronger and bigger, the collisions become more violent. From the 15, first and 10, the Bulls. Their lead has been cut in half. Brewer on the run, tries to turn the corner left side. Gain of four yards on first down. Gerald yeah, Hayes on the tackle for Pittsburgh. Clock winding down, 39 seconds. Right. And if I'm Pitt, that's exactly what I do. As soon as they see the run, then it's obvious South Florida's going to try to get out of the half. Boom, let's make it hard on them. Let's call timeouts. Let's not give them any time. What they really would like is for South Florida to have to punt the football in, in this situation, and then you're going to see a 10 or 11 man rush, I guarantee it. Walt Harris has done a great, great job with this program. Uh, I had a long talk with Johnny Major this morning, my old friend Johnny Majors. Uh, Walt Harris was his offensive coordinator at Tennessee uh, for six years. And I think Coach Majors was very instrumental in getting Walt Harris to one to come here and two to take the job here at Pitt. And three to stay because again, uh, he was mentioned for the Ohio State job. And yep. a lot of people thought he would be the new man at Ohio State, but he decided to stay here at Pittsburgh. This is a program that's back on the move. It's yeah. a program that has an incredible new facility. There's a lot of attention on this program here at Pittsburgh. And, uh, you know, a lot of the reason is because of Harris. Very unique concept. Pitt and the, and the Pittsburgh Steelers share a huge, spectacular facility with their offices, everything. It's amazing. Second down and five. Both teams now with two timeouts. Crossley. Gain of four yards on the play, about a yard shy of the first down. The tackle was made by Joe Conley. Grossley really, you know, as, as he cut that play up, he, he really showed a little bit of burst. And I tell you, as the football coach with a running back, I'm always looking for that burst when they decide to cut it up. And he showed it right there. Young Again, guy. He's a very young running back, and he needs to hold on to the football in this situation. Right. He's from Sumter High School, Bushnell, Florida. 
4,765 yards in his high school career. Not bad. Very huh? impressive. Not bad. Again, Pittsburgh called the timeout on that play. Pittsburgh will have one more timeout remaining. Uh, and, and exactly, if if South Florida cannot get the first down here, then that scenario that we talked about is there. They got a punt, and they're going to. You have a new snapper and a young punter, and you know <laughs> Jim Levin wants to get a first down here. Believe me, <laughs> <laughs> he wants one bad. I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of a naked. Uh, oh no, they're under center, some kind of a bootleg, uh, something with Markwell Blackwell. Third down and very short. Quarterback sneak, and I don't know if he got there. 25 seconds left to go. Going to be very, very close on this spot. He and with got the it. spot, got they it. may he have that first down, and it. they do have the first Boy, down. Well, I tell you, Jim Levitt's heaving a big sigh of relief right now. And now I, I just have the quarterback uh, take a knee and let's say let's get there's no timeouts uh, left. Uh, let's get out of here. Let's not take any chances of doing something foolish. Actually Pittsburgh has one oh, timeout do, remaining. Uh, then you got to run a play. Let's see what they do. And they'll let the clock wind down. We're under 10 seconds. Yeah they're going into that uh, into the victory formation. He'll just take a knee here. And uh, we'll go in at halftime with a 14-7 lead. So the South Florida Bulls come into Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, a team rated as high as number three in the Big East, a team that many believe is a top 25, top 30 team. And the South Florida Bulls, 0-1 on the season, have just drawn a line in the sand, and they have dared Pittsburgh to stand up to them. South Florida with the lead here at halftime by a score of 14-7. When we come back, we'll talk to Leroy Selman and have first half highlights and stats, much more live from Pittsburgh. And it's deja vu all over again for Jim Levitt and his very young football team leading here at halftime. In fact, a surprising lead at halftime against Pittsburgh from the Big East. And Doug Raber again, you know he's talking to his football team about the fact that they need to eliminate mistakes and not make the same mistakes that they made last week in the loss at Northern Illinois. Well, a absolutely. That's the key thing right now is to come out and really execute here in the third quarter. They have to continue to go after him. I mean, they got to go after him and go after him, not be afraid to throw the ball down the field. Uh, I think. I think we're going to see a few more blitzes from the South Florida defense because, uh, frankly, they have not gotten uh, to the quarterback with a four man rush. Now, if I'm Walt Harris, uh, I got to go back and get a tight end in the game and try to run the football at him a little bit and try to overpower him. That's what I would do if I was him. Now, let's see uh, exactly which route they go here. Again, a negative one yard in rushing for Pittsburgh. Lots kicks off. South Florida will get the football. This is Ryan Hearn. Gets it over the 20 and he is upended. Lewis Moore the tackle for Pittsburgh and it'll be first down and 10 from there for the South Florida Bulls. Now DeAndre Rubin was not back to return a kick. He left late in the first half with a bad ankle. Let's see if he comes on the field. And I'm looking at uh, Rubin is in the huddle. He is so in the huddle. That's a good sign for South Florida because uh, he had that, uh, that ankle injury last year in the fourth game of the season, and he really never did come back from it. You can see he's got just a, looks like a little bit of a gimp, but uh, that's a good sign for South Florida, not only for this game, but for down the road. South Florida rolled up the offense in the first period and a half, but they slowed down in the second, and one of the problems has been drop passes. Brian Fisher on the drop for South Florida. And again, I know it gets repetitive, but in this offense, you have to play throw and catch. And I'd give half and half blame on that one. That throw was a little low, but again, that could have been caught. Once again, four wide receivers on the field for the South Florida Bulls. Boy, they, they are spread all across the field. Blackwell, pump fake. Nearly picked off. Tory Cox had the football in his hands. Well, that's the danger of the look off and a pump fake because, uh, you know, you don't get a chance to read the corner yourself. You're just throwing it to a spot. 
And that was a great job by Cox. He was they're very very fortunate right there that that one was not picked. That is the 40th attempt for the South Florida Bulls today. Their record for a game is 44. Third and long. Looking for Ruben, it was high. Three and out for the South Florida Bulls. And I think what you see right there is Marquell lost his poise a little bit when he almost threw that interception. Uh, you know, you got to put that play away and come back and execute on the next play. Sanderson to punt. And back to receive William Ferguson for Pittsburgh. A very high punt. Ferguson will take it at the 38. Now, if I'm the officials, I throw a flag right there on the pit bench. Uh, that's ridiculous to have a coach running and jumping at an official like that. Plus, it was a legitimate call. He gave plenty of room on the fair catch. Kenny I'm Robinson on the coverage for South Florida. Now, th this is absolutely a good play by South Florida, a good punt. And in my opinion, that should have been a flag thrown right there. On the bench, a not on Absolutely on the bench. South Florida. Right there, you cannot have coaches jumping and screaming at officials like that. That's an assistant coach. That should have been a penalty, and I I'm disappointed that they didn't throw a flag. So the South Florida defense that has given up one play, and that's it. But it's a 56-yard touchdown. It'll be first and 10 from the 38 for Pittsburgh. Priestley, who threw the touchdown pass, going deep again over the middle. And Lamar Slade had it in his hands, but he remembers a hit earlier today from J.R. Reed, and it's amazing how he got those alligator arms, Doug Graber. Yeah, it does happen, doesn't it? And, of course, uh, you know, on this play, uh, the one thing I didn't like, or let's take a look at the replay right there, is I, I would like to see the free safety play the ball a little bit more than the receiver. Because if he plays the ball right there, he's got a chance for a pick. Second down and 10. The blitz. Complete. RJ English, good for a first down. Well, uh, Pitt did an excellent job of picking up the blitz, so Bernard Brown is a one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I just got to simply beat on the inside move right there, and that's a nice throw and catch by Pitt. There's, there's Mr. Reed coming in again. Priestley incomplete. Was looking for Slade again. Coverage by Kawika Mitchell and Bernard Brown. And 43. Well, this is a key drive. And uh, you don't like the body English on either team right now if you're a South Florida fan. They're kind of, uh, you know, looking at us a little bit shaky, and Pitt came out with a lot of confidence, and they're throwing the football. Impressive numbers for Priestley, but again, 56 of those came on one play. Slate in motion. Priestley steps up, dumps it off, nearly picked off by the Bulls. Anthony Williams could have had the ball right in his hands. Wasn't quite ready for it. Uh, and, and it looks to me like Priestley, if you get him out of his rhythm at all, he, he's not real creative uh, when you get him moving a little bit. Again, if they could somehow put some heat on there. You see Walt Harris. If you could somehow put some heat on with the four-man rush, uh, I think I'd like my chances. Third down and 10. Pittsburgh has been horrible on third down today. Let's overthrows RJ English. Excellent coverage and by Maurice Tucker. Exactly. And you called it out. I think the coverage really forced the overthrow because if that had been thrown in there, I think Maurice Tucker really had a great opportunity to make an interception. DeAndre Rubin back to receive Andy Lee. Already seven punts today. There's Ruben standing at his 10 yard line. Got to be alert for the fake here. Ball's on the 43 yard line. Very high punt. 
The fair catch is called, and that goes into the end zone. So the Bulls will get a first and 10 at the 20-yard line. A 43-yard punt. South Florida with the lead and the football. Just underway in the third. South Florida up 14-7. All kinds of fans here today in Pittsburgh for game number two on the season for the Pitt Panthers and their second game in brand new Heinz Field. South Florida with the lead of 14-7, so they're smiling for now here at Pittsburgh. It's a very hot, warm day. A lot of the people went inside to the corridors here during halftime, and they're slow making their way back out here at halftime. Jim Levitt's team with the lead at 14-7, and the Bulls will have the football for the second time here in the second half. And that Mark Well, Blackwell, impressive early in the first half, but things have cooled down here since. Yeah, that was not a very good uh, first series for the uh, Flo uh, South Florida offense. Uh, three downs and out, and, and really it was kind of an ugly three downs and out. So uh, you know, they they have to make some plays. You got to throw and catch in this offense. And what Pitt did on that first series is they started rushing three from the side away from the back. And that's that's tough to pick up. So you got one on ones out there. And if they don't slide that way, you got a free blitzer. Four wide receivers, quick pass, Hugh Smith. The Bulls say it's a catch. The Panthers say it's not. And now the field judge says it is not a catch. They say they hit the ground first. Yeah, of course, Hugh Smith had a tough time in the opening game, and uh, but he's a guy with speed, and you got to keep working with him. He had a lot of drops in that game, but that one was really a very, very tough catch. South Florida 0 for 4 in the passing department here in this half. Second down and long. Here comes a blitz. Blackwell picks it up, pass is complete. Ryan Hearn, and that's the first completion in the second half for the South Florida Bulls. Tackled by Mark Paco. Uh, th this is, again, this is the kind of throws you want against the blitz, the quick slants. That's just very, very good coverage on that particular one. You had a bad matchup for Pitt on the, the last one. You had Hugh Smith matched up against the linebacker. If they continue to do that, look for South Florida to go there. Third down and four. Another blitz. The Bulls pick it up. Iskra again had a step on his man, William Ferguson, but the Bulls cannot connect. In that situation, you've got to give the receiver a chance to make a play. Now, that's the fourth one on blitzes where the ball has been overthrown. And, and he's got it. And that's it, because he read it. Everybody was perfect. He had him beat. You've got to give him a chance to make a play. Ferguson back to receive. Iskra knew he had an opportunity right there. But it was just long on the pass. Sanderson gets it away. A low kick. Ferguson with Roof. And the fumble. The Bulls will try to pick it up before it goes out of bounds. First down. South Florida has the football. Jason Allen. Jason Allen on the recovery and the Bulls we're desperate for something good to happen here. Great job getting the football stripped uh, right there. That was uh, Javon Kamen. And boy, I'll tell you, Johnny on the spot, and that's what you need. Things aren't going well. You need a turnover, and they got one. South Florida with its biggest break since very early in the opening period. You know, and, and when you give up that big play at the end of the first half, you lose all your momentum out. Now, this is a great opportunity for South Florida to get the momentum back. On the carry, Quentin Callum, the sophomore out of Lake City. Boy, Not intimidated at all by this pit defense. <laughs> He is a good-looking running back. I, I, I like I like all these backs that South Florida has. Gain of seven yards on the play. Second down, and make it a, a very short four. Again, now you got three wide receivers to the right, and you got a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the weak side. Another blitz. Quick pass, complete. Hugh Smith hangs on inside the 20-yard line. Good for a first down. 
That pass was gone in 1.55 seconds. And look at the replay here. And this, uh, this Smith converted running back. That was a nice catch in traffic. And, it, and he has talent. He's got to gain confidence in himself. And that's the best way to do it. Callum again over the 20. Hit very quickly. Mark Ponko on the tackle for Pittsburgh. Well, that's Ryan Knight, Brian Knight also in there. Yep, and that was the safety making the tackle. And uh, you know what? As, as soon as I have a safety up there making tackles like that, I'm coming with play action post. Second and nine at the 18. One yard gain on the play. Second down and nine. Blackwell, quick pass. Iskra at the 15, gets away from one defender, tries to stretch his way to the 11, but it's a good game. Ramon Walker with the tackle for Pittsburgh. And again, that's another example of these uh, corners being one-on-one -on -one with the outside receivers, and you got to play throw and catch. Quick throws, get it out there, and now that's what you need is a missed tackle. Now instead of a three-yard gain, you got a seven-yard gain. Blackwell now 25 of 46 for 202 yards. Third down and four. Pittsburgh showing another blitz. Six seconds on the play clock. Blackwell on the rollout, complete. Hugh Smith, touchdown, South Florida. 13 yards. That, believe it or not, was an audible from the sideline by that gentleman right there. And you take a look at the sprint out here, and it's good protection, good throw and catch, nice job by Hugh Smith. And boy, that's gotta, that's gotta make you feel good for him. He had a tough opening game. Santiago Gramatica into attempt the point after as Smith is receiving. Congratulations. And Gramatica is good. And the South Florida Bulls scoreless since the opening period comes back after a turnover, 21-7 Bulls. Hugh Smith and the South Florida Bulls make Pittsburgh pay for the fumbled punt, the touchdown pass of 13 yards, and the South Florida Bulls run their lead to 21-7. Just a simple sprint out and a, and a simple quick out cut, and again, a missed tackle. And that, that's what a running back gives you, uh, you know, as an added dimension out there at wide receiver. Five plays, 37 yards after the fumble punt. South Florida, Markwell Blackwell has hit 26 of 47 passes, good for 215 yards. He's one off the USF record already. Big tackle for the Bulls. Again, the man that recovered the punt just a few moments ago, Javon Kamen with the big play on special teams. They have a great opportunity here to totally regain the momentum of the game. Now they have offensively. Can they do it on defense? Priestley back on the field. Pittsburgh has shuttled quarterbacks in and out, especially in the second period. But it's Priestley that has led Pittsburgh to its only touchdown, that on a 56-yard pass. This is an audible. They're counting the box. Right now. Five seconds on the play clock. Quick pass. Complete to English. Excuse me. Make that Yogi Roth. And Roth is very slow getting up. Maurice Tucker made him pay for that catch. It looks like he might have hurt his back here. He took a pretty good uh, shot with a helmet right in the back. Actually, it looks like he may have taken a knee in the back. Yep. That was uh, Maurice Tucker. Now, on that, on that particular play, Al, South Florida had six in the box. When I talk about the box, I'm talking about inside the tackle box. So uh, right away, that, that's going to be passed when they audible like that. If there's five in the box, they're going to have a run. It's really not very complicated. Let's take a look at this again and see if we can see. Yeah, that was just a quick throw. And you're right. Looked like a maybe his knee to the upper back or his helmet. It's kind of got twisted.
And Roth is very slow moving. Now, again, very early in the play, he was able to sit up a little bit and as he now gets up. Again, he's not a big guy, 5'9", 170 pounds. Tonight, stay with Fox Sportsnet as we take you out live to the to Pro Player Stadium as the Florida Marlins host the always fashionable Mike Piazza on the New York Mets. Game two of a three-game set. The action gets started 7 o'clock right here on Fox Sportsnet. The always fashionable Mike Piazza used to be a Florida Marlin. Second at three at the 25. There's the, there's the big fog machine sending out that big fog and that nice cool mist. Kirkley gets away and he has a first down. Still going. Kirkley. Uh, he, he has some balance and strength. He really does. Kawika Mitchell finally pulls him down. First and ten that was a, a slant. There was nothing there, and he simply cut it back to the weak side. Take a look at it here. See the play? Oh, that's a trap that ought to see exactly what they did. He starts the trap. It's like a counter trap off this offense. First and 10, just over the 35. Priestley steps up, tries to hit his tight end, Chris Wilson. Pass was high. Priestley does not impress me once he's moving back there. If they get him out of his rhythm, I, I, I don't think he can hurt him. Jacoy Blunt very slow getting up. He'll leave. I'll tell you, it, it is hot and humid here today, and you're going to have to roll those defensive linemen. Now uh, you've got uh, Ron Hemingway coming in at corner, so I think that's smart on the part of the uh, South Florida defensive staff. You've got to roll your defense a little bit because it is very, very hot and humid here today. And uh, we don't expect to see that or feel that when we get up here. Absolutely. We thought we were going to come here today and just have a nice fall day as Pittsburgh doesn't like something that it sees up front, calls a timeout. And again, <laughs> the fans here in Pittsburgh, very little patience. Maybe it's because of the heat there, Doug Graber. Well, you know, I. Golly, I, I hate to say this, you know, but I, I'm a little bit surprised at the Pitt fans uh, that they would be that impatient. Uh, you know, this is college football. You know, you, you've got young freshmen out there, young kids, and I, I understand the frustrations. Uh, but you got this does not help your football team. In fact, if anything, it makes it worse. Now, when I was the coach in in, uh, in New Jersey, <laughs> hey, you had one bad play and they'd be on you. <laughs> Check out the rushing yards. Now, again, in the first half, South Florida hit Pittsburgh to negative numbers. Well, South Florida still with a large advantage, 91-10. And really, the only play that Pittsburgh has made in this ballgame is a 56-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and that was simply a mistake by the corner. South Florida with the lead at 21-7, second down and 10. Low snap, the screen pass, and Kirkley did not look it in. He knew he had some room, and he was running before he had the football. And that was a mistake by uh, Maurice Tucker. He was the right corner for South Florida playing cover two, and he, you have to use your eyes and see the flare coming. So take a look at it right here. Look at the right corner right here. He's in playing cover two, and he does not see the flare, and he stays on the wide receiver too long. Third down and 10. Pittsburgh one of nine today on third down. From the 36, South Florida with that lead as the clock is winding down and they just get it away. Priestley with time. Now Greg Walls gets him. Excellent coverage by the South Florida Bulls and the third sack today for the South Florida Bulls and listen to the Boo Birds here at Pittsburgh. Uh, that was a great job by Walls. It was great coverage. They're looking for the in route here up to the left part of your screen. And this is an excellent job by Kawika Mitchell, number five, getting under the in route. That forced him to hold the ball. Andy Lee will punt. DeAndre Rubin standing at his 30. Lee gets it away. Ruben will have some room. Gets away from one tackler. Trying the left side. Cuts it back. 
up to the 44-yard line, a 45-yard punt. And now a South Florida Bull is injured back where the ball was punted. That's Kenny Robinson. Kenny Robinson is, the, uh, is one of the corners for South Florida. One of the good ones. Looking at his knee or ankle, right knee or ankle, can't tell which. Young guy out of Pensacola. Okay, that. And he'll have some help going off the field. You know, the, the one thing that's pretty obvious to me from up here as we watch this game, Al Keck, is again, the Florida speed. I mean, you can just see it in almost every facet of the game. And uh, I'll tell you, it's not going to take South Florida long, in my opinion. Uh, I think they can be a dominant team in Conference USA. I really do. Just like Miami is in the Big East, just like Florida is in the SEC, just like Florida State is in the ACC. No question about it. First down and 10 for the Bulls at the 45. Again, excellent field position. They lead it at 21-7. Blackwell, quick pass, and he was nailed. Had very little time before Ryan Smith came charging through and hit him just as he threw the football. Uh, and, and Ryan Smith is, uh, he is a good one. He's an All-American candidate. You can see him coming here from the uh, this side of the screen right there. Bam. Second down and 10, Iskra, good job going up to get that pass as they get a gain on second down. You know, the, the sad thing there, Al, is if that I throws a little bad. lower, he had a lot of running room, and I, he, he could have got at least three or four more yards. Take a look at it. It's a great catch by Iskra. Former walk-on that has really, really come up big uh, for South Florida. Really is doing a heck of a job. That's now 27 completions for Markwell Blackwell, and that ties a USF record. The Bulls now on third down and five, seven of 13 on third down. With the blitz, Huey Whitaker has some room. He has a first down and much more. Still going at the 30, gets a block, and he'll go all the way for a touchdown. Well, 50 a, yards, but there's a flag down. down. Well, and I think, unfortunately, I think I saw it was close to a clip by the other wide receiver at the top of the screen, and I think they called it. He tried to pull off at the last second, but he didn't do it. Let's see if that's the call. Heartbreak City, if it is, for the South Florida Bulls. And it is. Oh, a tough play. It would have been a 50-yard touchdown. Who's it on? You can read those. That who's it on? I think it's on the wide receiver. I thought I, I thought out of the corner of my eye, I saw something that was close. Holding, Holding. offense, 10-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. We're going to take a look at it here and see if we can see it. I think it's by the wide receiver at the top of the screen. Right. Well, if that's the call, now that's not a good call. I don't know. I didn't think, of course, in college, they don't give the numbers, but that, that's where the flag was thrown, right in that area. But it is still enough for a first down. First and 10. Right? At the uh, I don't know. I can't see it. Still the Bulls get it at the 42, first and 10 from there. On the run, Derek Rocker, nowhere to go. Ryan Ready Smith, the big hit. You know, Al, uh, Huey Whitaker, the big 6'5", 225-pound sophomore, uh, he surprised me with his speed <laughs> on that play. And how about some wow. of those moves, the quick feet? That, that is a big wide receiver out there. Second down and 10 from the 42. Crowd still buzzing about that 50-yard touchdown pass. Called back. Blackwell with time behind Reuben. Torrey Cox, and here comes a flag. 
Cox may have been climbing up on Ruben's back. Uh, that, that might be a makeup call right there. You, you know, you never know. The officials know when they miss one, though. They really do. was behind Ruben. Yeah, it was not a good throw. Uh, uh, just a tad early. You know, uh, you know me, Al. I mean, I'm not sure. The secondary coach right. here. That's right. Still has never really seen true pass interference. The, uh, you know what, the, the, the key, the, that was not a well-thrown ball, and the key there was the snap was low again, and it's really hard in this offense to snap that football 70 times in a game. The chains are still moving from the 31. The reverse. Hugh Smith, if he can get a block and turn the corner, cuts it off, and he's nailed at the 30. Tory Cox, a little frustrated on that call, came up and put a licking on Hugh Smith. Yeah, got a couple now. That sets up about second and eight. And uh, that was uh, Blackwell's out here trying to make a block. No, well, that's not bad. By Didn't a do a bad job on Lewis for, Moore. For a quarterback, that's pretty darn good. At the 30, another quick pass. Hugh Smith keeps his feet, trying to turn the corner again and nowhere to go. Excellent job by Pittsburgh. Now, that was Ponko, Mark Ponko, the safety, three year starter. Mark Ponko made the tackle. 50 passes now on the day for Markwell Blackwell. I'm still a little bit of a traditionalist in football, Al. This is uh, this is different. I'm, it's fun though. You got to like it. It's but then fun. again, in the, in the Bulls' situation coming in against this defense, they had to do something different, and right. they had to do something to take Pittsburgh out of its comfort zone, and right. they've done exactly that, leading 21-7. Third down and eight. Blackwell takes it himself. Blackwell close to a first down. This will set up a very interesting call if he's short. Yeah, th this is a big time call now. Let's see what uh, what Jim does. I think he's going for it. He said he's got Huey Whitaker in the game. I think Marquell. I just have the feeling he almost made up his mind ahead of time he was going to run it. And on fourth down, fourth and less than a yard. The South Florida Bulls say, hey, we'll strap it on. We're going for a victory here. 21-7 with the lead. From the shotgun. Blackwell on the pass. Has his man inside the 10. Fisher, touchdown. Oh. South Florida on fourth and one. How's that for having some confidence in your quarterback right there to make that call on a fourth and a very short one? And I'll tell you what, this is an amazing performance by this young South Florida football team. And you got another pit player down on the field. In fact, there's two. You've got two. Here's the sprint out, makes a nice throw and catch, and a great job of getting the ball into the end zone right there. And both of those players are still down on the field. Looks like uh, both the defensive backs. Nice job. Watch this collision here. Both defensive backs collide right here and they're both down on the field. There's a collision right there. Well that's scary. That's scary. Look take a look at the white simple sprint out out cut. He pushes up the field and works to the sideline. Nice job of advancing the football. Good block by the wide receiver right there. And here's this dangerous collision right there. Mm. That could be extremely Dangerous. Boy, this uh, Ramon Walker, one of the players down, and there is Brian Fisher, who earlier had dropped some passes. As Walker is now getting up, that's a de Ramon Walker is a big-time All-American candidate. He's on the Thorpe list, and Shante Spencer, the other corner, a little woozy. Yeah, he sure is. He's the one. His head got uh, got buckled back. And he got it right in the gut with his head, so that, that's that's uh, that's scary. This is not a good day for the Pitt Panthers. They've had a bunch of injuries. Watch the collision right here with the head right to the gut oh. right there. Wow. Whoa. That could have been extremely serious. Gramatica in to get the point after. 
And that's good. So the South Florida Bulls staring right at the Pitt Panthers. There's Brian Fisher. He's a freshman, has his first touchdown pass, and it's a big one as the Bulls lead 28-7. Welcome back to Pittsburgh, the South Florida Bulls. Look at that lead, 28-7, and there may be some Pitt fans ready to hit the water after this one. They may hit it here before the third quarter is over. Al, th th this is truly incredible to me that this young South Florida team uh, has been able to make, make this trip and execute. I mean, they're just dominating Pitt, and, and Pitt, I can't emphasize, I mean, Pitt was ranked 29th in the country, and, and really, uh, you know, <laughs> had high hopes they've got Miami coming in here in two weeks. And uh, th this is just incredible to me. Walt Harris, there's no way that he envisioned this happening. And again, the speed and athleticism of South Florida is, is really very, very apparent here today. Dramatic had to kick off. Ferguson takes it at the two. Big block. Pale tries to catch him, and Fisher, who caught the touchdown pass, makes a big tackle on special teams. Yeah, and you could see that return coming because he did an excellent job of starting to his left. He, he kind of baited the South Florida defenders in, and then he took it back out to the right. Take a look at it right here. And South Florida really gets out of their lanes in the kickoff coverage. Right there, you can see it right there. They're out of their lanes, and that creates a huge gap. At the 30, first and 10 for Pittsburgh. They're counting the box, and this was an audible again. Priestley is nailed. Maurice Jones for the South Florida Bulls, the fourth sack today for the South Florida defense. Young linebacker out of Bradenton, Booker High School, runs a 4-5, made up huge play right here, and he beats the back inside. He just oh, runs yeah. right through the freshman running back and down the That's quarterback 29. goes. Second down and 15. Pittsburgh has lost 32 yards on sacks today. I, I have to say this, I don't think this spread offense fits the Pittsburgh personnel. I know it fits South Florida. Second down and 16. Priestley with time. Complete and a big play. R.J. English. Can Brown run him down? No, he can't. 70 yards. And for a second time today, Pittsburgh has come back with a big play to answer. Well, the safety and the corner are both there. They simply knock each other off the tackle. Amazing. Because they're, they're in a three deep coverage, you got a free safety. Right there, you can see them collide with each other and away he goes untouched. Boy, this is gonna, walk, this is gonna be a wild one. You can see it coming. 71 yards on the play. Lots in to attempt the point after. And the Bulls lead, cut to 21. Make that 28. 14. Still plenty of time in the third quarter. Now, it's urgent for South Florida that offensively, you don't allow the momentum to switch again. Now, they have to come out. I, they don't have to score, but they've got to move the change. They absolutely have to get some field position back for their defense. Now, again, for South Florida, this big play comes after the Bulls get to the quarterback. Yep. And, uh, you know, and, and, I mean, you just can't. That, I've had that happen to me as a secondary coach. You've got guys in position to make a play. Remember earlier when I talked about G.R. Reed playing the receiver and not the ball? I, I think that really hurt right there because if he plays the football, he's going to collide right there with the receiver for it. And Rick Kravitz is very disappointed. He is the secondary coach as well. But, you know, they were in position to make the play. It, 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 that was really just kind of unfortunate. 28-14. South Florida trying to cling to that lead. 
And it's a very quick scoring drive. Two plays, 65 yards. Again, the play before that was a sack. The 71-yard touchdown pass. Really, Pittsburgh has had two plays. A 56-yard touchdown pass and a 71-yard touchdown pass. Lots to kick off. DeAndre Rubin, two yards deep. He's so excited. He should have been nailed at the 10-yard line, but he pulls it out near the 20. Well, he's a confident, confident uh, player because uh, as a, I'd just as soon he would just take a knee in the end zone on that one, to be honest with you. 441 left to go in the third. Again, with this passing offense, the game just gets longer and longer and longer. And the Bulls, they've already scored two touchdowns here in the third quarter, but they still have a lot of time to try to keep this lead. There you see Rod Smith, and they're going to run right out on the field now and run the play. You got to say one thing, Al. They don't waste a lot of time in the huddle, do they? Absolutely the, the, not. There is no huddle yeah, by did. either team. Exactly. First and ten. Again, the Bulls have to hang on to the football here. Play action. Blackwell just throws it deep. Nobody around. That looks like uh, Torrey Cox, the corner there, uh, is having some cramping problems out on the field, and he's coming out now. Look at uh, these numbers. 54 attempts. That is a Bulls record. 31 wow. completions. That is a Bulls record. Hey, 436 left in the third quarter. He could hit 80. He could hit <laughs> 80 passes if, he, if they go on some long drives. Here comes a blitz. The Bulls pick it up. Quick pass heard. Can he get away? He's at the 20 trying to fight his way. Very little gain. That'll set up third down and long. Mark Paco, boy, how many tackles has he made today? The stop for Pittsburgh. I'd like to see South Florida work these corners a little bit with just some very uh, quick hitches. There's DeAndre Rubin, already has two touchdown catches today. Okay, now the play has been sent in from the sideline. Third down and seven. Here comes another blitz. Blackwell gets it away, looking for Ruben, incomplete. And Blackwell was nailed. You know, he, he may be just getting tired of I mean, <laughs> to, th to throw that many balls. Or you know, this offense puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I mean, you know, every single play, you got to make plays. You got to make plays. There he's talking to his coach, Rod Smith. Sanderson to punt. He's at his nine. Ferguson back to rip, uh, back to receive, and a beautiful punt by Sanderson, going for the sideline. And Pittsburgh has been able to do two things with the football. Two long plays, that's it. Now the South Florida Bulls are hoping their defense can hold on. USF aims to extinguish the Liberty Flames on October 27th at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. The University of South Florida Bulls will lock horns with the Liberty Flames of Virginia. Don't miss our coverage here on Fox Sports Now the Bulls will make their home debut next Saturday at Raymond James Stadium. They take on Southern Utah. 347 left to go on the third. The last time Pittsburgh had the football, they had a 71 yard touchdown pass. Priestley with time. Hits his tight end. Chris Wilson. Good for a first down, 12 yards. Yeah, that's been a concern all day long when South Florida rushes a four, as you see right here from this shot. Uh, they're just having a hard time getting much pressure on them, and you can't give them that much time. This is a pit offensive line is a good one. At midfield, first and ten. Priestley changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Eight seconds on the play clock. Priestley gets it away, looking for Lamar Slade incomplete. Excellent coverage by Tucker. Well, that was the slant. That was a pretty good throw, and he was right there. 
You know, Al, the one thing with the, uh, let's take a look at a replay right here. You see, this is just simply a three deep zone and you're gonna watch your right corner play good inside position to make a good drive on that football right there. Six one, 190 pound junior, Tucker. Started at Indiana. I had seven starts there and then transferred to South Florida. 575 yards of passing offense between these two teams today. Priestley, the screen pass. Jemison. Close to another first down. Man, you know, now the crowd is getting into this game a little bit, and uh, there's no question the momentum is starting to swing to the Pitt Panthers. No question about it. They need a play. They need a turnover. Rick Kravitz is doing everything he can to help them out. And now Priestley leaves, and Rod Rutherford comes in on third down and very short. Look for an option. Option or uh, something with him, obviously, uh, touching the football. Oh, Quarterback sneak, and they get the first down. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe they don't trust Priestley to run a quarterback sneak. Uh, sneak. That's not that hard. <laughs> Priestley back in. Twenty-eight, fourteen. South Florida with the lead. Complete the Roth, but the Bulls are right there. Well, and I saw a mouthpiece uh, go flying on that hit. That was a good hit by Miller. John Miller, the tackle. 6'1, 190 pound sophomore. Watch if you can see this. Watch, you can see a face bat. Can't quite see it there. I saw it from up here, though. Gain of two. You take that every time. Second down. Got the receivers both stacked on both sides of the football. Priestley all kinds of time. Finds Slade and Slade nearly gets away. But again, he is close to another first down. Yeah, he, again, Mitchell, the tackle for South Florida. You just cannot give him that much time. And that was with a five-man rush because Joe Morgan at the top of your screen is coming on the blitz. Third and one. He gets picked up and you just cannot give him that much time. Another quarterback sneak. Rutherford yeah. back in. Third down. Pittsburgh only two of 11. And this time the Bulls may have held, although on second and third effort, Rutherford may have pulled it off. I guess that's why they put him in, huh? <laughs> Rutherford stopped at the line of scrimmage, and the Bulls simply didn't wrap him up. You know, there, there is nothing harder for a defensive lineman than rushing the passer every single play. It is extremely fatiguing, and they, they really look dead on their feet right now. Roth in motion. Here comes Kawika Mitchell chasing Priestley. Priestley has some room. Priestley on the run, knocked out of bounds by Kevin Verpale. Verpale. Gain of three yards. I tell you, Pitt got away with a hold right there because Anthony Williams was coming free on the blitz, and he absolutely, he got wrapped up by, I think it was the guard, just got wrapped up and pulled down. Well, how about that intensity, Rick Kravitz? Second down and seven. Priestley. Under pressure, wide open English, cuts it back at the five, inside the two. Javon came in the touchdown saving tackle, a 22 yard gain, and the crowd here at Heinz Field has finally come to life. You know, the South Florida defense looks absolutely out of gas right now. now that's not a very good effort right there by Maurice Tucker. Time out. 
And the South Florida Bulls call timeout. There's still 113 left to go in the third. Pitt is running off the field. South Florida's having a hard time walking off the field. It's a, a hot, humid day here, and it's very fatiguing, uh, you know, to rush the passer and play pass defense every single play. But in, in all, it's, and it's a little bit of a problem uh, offensively, too, with this offense is when you do have a lead like this, you know, again, it's hard to run the clock because it's a passing uh, offense, and, uh, you know, you, you just can't run the clock and help your defense that much. I'm not, not saying I don't like it. I love the offense, but that's one of the problems. The other one is in the red zone, the way I see it from a coaching standpoint. Again, still 113 left to go in the third. South Florida with the lead at 28-14. At what time South Florida had the lead at 28-7? You know, and again, with all these young players, uh, it, it takes a lot of mental toughness, physical and mental toughness, uh, to, to, to play great football for a whole football game. And I think the, uh, the young guys from South Florida may be feeling a little sorry for themselves right now, obviously a little fatigued. They somehow have to suck it up and go on. First and goal at the two. Rutherford now in at quarterback. He may run it. They hand off instead Jemison. Jemison very close to the goal line. Kawika Mitchell with the tackle. Now that clock is running down. We've got now 59 seconds left in the third quarter. We could mention, boy, I'll tell you, that guy's a player. He's just a junior, but he's on the Butkus list. Uh, he's a one heck of a pro prospect, 6'2", 255. Less than a yard, second and goal. Rutherford again, the quarterback. Jemison. And the Bulls will not let him in. Again, Mitchell, along with Maurice Tucker. Excellent timeout that the South Florida staff took to give these young kids the chance to kind of gather themselves a little bit. We just talked about Kawika Mitchell right there. Watch him right here. Watch him slide right here and get right in on this hit. He and Jones, both all the linebackers, Anthony Williams is in there. Rutherford again back in. At the end. And that is the end is of the third quarter. What a football game so far here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Don't go away. This fourth quarter could be one to remember in the Bulls' lead, 28-14. All right, what's wrong with this picture? Number one, I'm at a football game. Number two, I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> My goodness. Unfortunately, those Pittsburgh fans have no idea what's going on out there on the river. They're standing because the Panthers are knocking at the door for a touchdown. It is a, shall we say, a very interesting venue here at Heinz Field. Well, I'll tell you what, this third down play right here is going to be very interesting. Uh, Got to be alert now for the play action with this young guy in here at quarterback. Because he can flat run and make some things happen. Rutherford in a quarterback. Third down and a long one. The Bulls get through very quickly, but Kirkley finds his way to the end zone. And here come the Pitt Panthers. Well, that makes it official. The, the momentum now has totally turned to Pitt. Excellent penetration up front, and uh, it, obviously uh, playing the inside run, run the quick toss. Uh, good call by Walt Harris. Walt Harris, by the way, calls the plays for the Pitt offense as well, the head coach. Nick Lotz will attempt the point after. Got a flag down. I don't know if this is a substitution problem or exactly. That ball, a sportsmanlike conduct foul. Defense, pass the distance to the goal. 
Through the crowd. Yeah. Who is it? Who is it, he's saying? Uh, I got that one. It looks like 53. Well, if it is 53, it'd be interesting because there isn't a 53 right. on the roster for South Florida. Although it could have been eight. Could have been Greg Walls. Foolish penalty. And the kick by Lotz is good, but another penalty flag has been dropped. Now, there was some movement there. It looked like South Florida might have been offsides. Uh, you got to be careful here because you get down in here too tight and they may go for two. Dead ball, offsides, defense, half a distance to the goal, three play. No, he's still going to kick it, it looks like. But, you know, this is a sure sign that your team is losing their poise. And that is not going to make Jim Levitt happy. There's ever a team that needed some positive news right there, even though they had the lead, it's South Florida. That is a huge play for the Bulls. Because now, uh, you know, you got to go for two to tie the score. If you score again, if you're pit. Boy, you're looking for anything right now. You're looking for anything. Great job. Come on, hustle up. Let's get off the field. Got to regather your team. Well, I tell you, Jim Levitt is working hard on that sideline. Got a chance, in my opinion, to have, without question, the greatest victory in the history of this oh, young easily. program. Easily. And uh, boy, I tell you, and your team is, is really all of a sudden losing their poise. Uh, getting tired, getting beat down. You gotta try to regather the troops. Now, they need to do something offensively. They need to move the football and help the defense here. And again, getting back to what we talked about earlier, Al, that's it's as I see it, one of the problems with this offense, it's a it's a little bit of a hard offense to run when you have a lead and you're trying to run the clock. DeAndre Rubin back to receive along with Ryan Hearn. I say that, but yet, you know, I, I got to tell you also, I'm intrigued by this offense as well. And it really fits the talent that South Florida has. That's the best thing about it. Speed. Lots will kick off. Very high, but this is short. Rubin. Takes it on the run at the 15. Gets away from one tackler. Look at those quick feet. Ruben nearly pulled down by the kicker, but a big gain on the kickoff return. Gerald Hayes with the tackle, but not before the Bulls get excellent field position. Great field position, and this guy is exciting to watch. Makes a great outside move right here. Makes another guy miss right there. Makes another guy miss on the sideline right there. And the result is you're out to the 40 yard line. Great field position for this drive. Got to get a blow that he returns punts and returns kickoffs. A 25 yard return for DeAndre Rubin. Quick pass. Whitaker complete over the 45 yard line. That ball was gone in 1.55 seconds, and that's exactly what I want to see as a coach. I want to see them continue to attack those corners out there over those with that quick passing game. And then I'd like to see a little hitch and go at some point here, because you'll run by one of them. Second down and three. Crossley. 
Fights his way for the first down, still going. Down at the 46 yard line. Again, the freshman from South Sumter. Glenn Crosley. The 20th first down today for the South Florida Bulls. And the Bulls don't want to say this. Jimmy Fitz, one of their veteran offensive linemen, one of their captains, leaving the football game. Well, that's a great run. I tell you, this was a key first down, but boy, you don't want to see Jimmy Fitz have to leave the field because they have very little depth in their offensive line. And the Bulls need to hang on to the football here. South Florida on the march. 20 first downs for the South Florida Bulls. Screen pass, the wide receiver screen. Whitaker brought down after a gain of one. That's the fourth time now that they've run the wide receiver screen today, and they, and they were sitting waiting for it that time. Here comes Ruben back in. Now here's good look at the wide receiver screen. You see the lineman downfield block, and they miss runs. <laughs> That's so frustrating as a coach. He's right there, and he runs right by the defender, talking about the offensive tackle. And uh, but but you know the big guys, they're they're not used to blocking guys in space and seeing all that out there. Complete at the 40. Brian Fisher has a touchdown catch today, but Ramon Walker came up and gave him a pounding. Yep, this is going to set up a crucial third down now, third and four. Here's the sprint out and the outcut, the same play they scored on earlier. Well, that Ramon Walker, he, he is a great, great football player. Four wide receivers for the South Florida Bulls. He is a big time hitter, that young guy. Seven seconds on the play clock. A blitz. Incomplete. Just out of the reach of Ryan Hurd. Brian Benneke on the coverage for Pittsburgh. That ball was gone in 1.90 seconds, which is plenty of time. Again, in this offense, you've got to play throw and catch. You have to throw and catch. That was the 60th pass today for the South Florida Bulls and Markwell Blackwell. That's incredible. And the Bulls would love to get this inside the 10 yard line. A very high punt. Into the end zone and the Bulls miss out on a chance to pin Pittsburgh deep in its own territory. 12.09 left to go in the fourth and this will be a wild fourth quarter. The Bulls lead by eight. We're back at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. You know, Doug, I think some of those fans headed out to the river. And maybe for good reason. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Kick off the NFL regular season the right way with NFL This Morning, an amusing yet informative look at this year's cast of players, team news, and everything you need to know to prepare you for the season tomorrow morning, 1030, right here on Fox Sports Net. Oh, they're leaving. It's been a... Uh, very warm day here in Pittsburgh. A lot of people enjoying the river today. This might be one of the last warm days of the year here. You know, that you could never, be. You never that know. could be. I'll tell you one thing. You know, this stadium has, was the open end. I mean, I can't imagine in December, man. I can just see that wind Whoa. whistling in off that river. It's going to yeah. be a little bit chilly yeah. in here. But again, what a beautiful facility. The same group that built Raymond James built this stadium. It's HMO out of Kansas City. Are the and it is really a sight when you come into town and you see this right next door to the baseball facility. It is incredible. First and 10 at the 20 for Pittsburgh. Kirkley. And he's hit immediately by Jones. Yeah, and that, that was that little counter trap again that they run off this offense, which is a uh, very interesting play to me as a coach out of the shotgun. Good job by Jones. He was right there. Again, this clock is very slow for Jim Levitt. 11.47 left to go in the final quarter. Every, everything is at the line of scrimmage now. Here, here's the play. And now they're going to look at the box and count the box. Talking about the quarterback. 
Second down and a long nine. Priestley all kinds of time, finds his receiver Slade, and that should be enough for a first down. Yeah, that was Ron Hemingway, and he was just playing a, a three deep and really just gave him too much room. The young guy out of St. Pete. At, take a look at it right here. You see it, it, it the way I see it, you know, he, he never really was in a backpedaling, he did a shuffle, and that's hard to break on it. We're getting into some technical knowledge here about corner play. 11 08 and counting. First down at the 31. South Florida on the blitz. Priestley steps up under pressure, and he gets hit from behind by Anthony Williams. Williams had 12 tackles last week at Northern Illinois. He's probably close to that today as well. Yeah, Anthony Williams, uh, another linebacker, who runs 4-6. I mean, these backers for South Florida can really, really run. And watch, actually, they blow the blitz. They had two, they had double contain. Uh, one of those guys, Williams, or the, or I think it was Joe Morgan, should have taken the inside gap. One yard gain on the play, second down, and eight. Priestley again with time, complete at the 40. Miller the tackle, but not before. The tight end, Chris Wilson, makes a catch. And that was excellent coverage uh, by John Miller. That was an excellent throw and catch. you got to give Pitt credit. I mean, he, he's all over the tight end right here. And uh, Look at the, that. The big yeah. target like that, and the ball's thrown properly. You just can't stop it. At the 40, first and 10. Priestley, all kinds of time, hits his tight end again, and he's rumbling his way down the sideline, and he's knocked out of bounds on the bull side of the 50. Bernard Brown with the tackle, and another first down for Pittsburgh. Yeah, and, and Chris Daly misses the tackle here in the open field, and that's a sure sign of fatigue. Right there is the missed tackle. And we got a South Florida Bull down on the field. The trainers are coming out. And yeah, this, this team right now just looks dead on their feet to me. That's Jacoy Blunt. Gets up quickly. With as long as this defense has been on the field, Blunt may have been down from old age <laughs> more than anything else. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you, this is a very frustrating, tough thing as a coach to handle. You're dead on your feet out there. You're, you're going to try to substitute as much as you can. But all the momentum now is with Pitt, all of it. Remember, Somebody has time, to make a big play for South Florida. At one time, the Bulls led 28-7. Here comes a blitz. Priestley tries to get it away. There's a flag down away from the play. Kawika Mitchell with the pressure. That was a nice job by Kawika Mitchell. The back tried to step up and chop him. He was a good enough athlete to go right up over the top of the back and get to the quarterback. Illegal formation, offense, only six players on the scrimmage line. I think you got to decline this if you're South Florida. Let's see what, the, what they decide. Yep, yep, good call, Jim. So you take the down instead of the distance. Yep, you just had a positive play, and you, you want to put them in second and ten. Right now, with the way the momentum Illegal and everything else. Offense, five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Wait a minute, no, wait a minute. He just said no, 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 it. They, they just declined it. What? what? <laughs> he just declined it. Uh, yeah. Mr. Official, sir. Well, that is not a happy Jim Levitt right there. Uh, I, I tell you what, he's probably. Uh, now, it may have been one of the South Florida players yeah. that may have accepted it. Except that's exactly that's what, what happened. happened. He, he's mad at his defense because you, I mean, you can't give the signal any better than what he yes. just gave it. Decline, decline, decline. What's confusing about that? That's all right. It's not Jim. Let it go. OK, come on now. Let's go defense. Yeah. 
First down and 15. Again, Slade gets away from a defender, and he's close to the first down. Kenny Robinson knocks Slade out of bounds. Al, I, I know I'm being redundant, but they cannot get any pressure on him with a four-man rush. And I, when you're playing zones, you just cannot give them that much time. Look at it right here. I mean, they're getting manhandled in their pass rush. Second down and four. Make it three. Priestley in trouble. Pass was out of bounds. They're saying the receiver was out of bounds. Kenny Robinson on coverage today. And by the way, that was the 100th pass between these two teams today. I think I think it's a good call by the official. I think his, his foot was just slightly out of, no question about it. That's a good call. The line's been right there to make the call. Third and about three now. This is another big play. So far today on third down, Pittsburgh, four of 13 on third down. None bigger than this. Third down and three. Four seconds on the play clock, and he calls timeout. And the crowd here at Pittsburgh, again, very frustrated. They have one timeout remaining, and that could be crucial as we have a wild fourth quarter. 9.23 left to go, and the Bulls lead by eight. Again, part of the atmosphere here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. It's a gorgeous but very warm day here in Pittsburgh. That's right outside the stadium. Of course, this new field, this new stadium, is basically right where the old stadium is located at Three Rivers. When the old, old stadium was imploded, it was 30 feet away. They had, to, they had to make sure it went the right way. <laughs> All right, third down and three. The biggest play yet for the South Florida defense. South Florida on the blitz. The pass complete, first down. Slade and Pittsburgh. Bernard Brown on the stop for South Florida. They just, even with the blitzes now, they can't touch uh, Priestley. They just can't get to him. Take a look at it right here. Cannot get to him. Ah. 626 passing yards between these two teams. Over 100 passes. At the 31. Jemison on the run. And he's close to a first down. That's that counter slant play again. And boy, they have really had problems with that play in the second half. You know, after holding a minus uh, rushing yardage in the first half, that's the one play that they have not handled. Got That's a young freshman Grolinger in there. At the 23. Well, they are dead on their feet. Second down and two. Pump fake. And they throw it away. The crowd wanted a late hit. Priestley was planted at the 35-yard line. Priestley passing complete. So you just... Now South Florida just At substituted uh, four new players in here on defense to try to get some fresh legs on the field. Third uh, down and two. You know, it is so fatiguing to rush the passer over and over and over again. And Rod Rutherford back in now at quarterback. Walt Harris exchanging quarterbacks. Comes the option. The option. The pitch, and that's a fumble, and the Bulls lose out on an opportunity to pick it up. And plus, it's a first down for Pittsburgh. Ball was fumbled out of bounds. They had possession last. That's a good call by the official. Another South Florida Bull down. Let's take a look at the replay. 
good pitch. He just drops it. Oh, had a golden opportunity right there. That was J.R. Reed. Mm. Young man out of Hillsborough High School in Tampa. Played as a true freshman last year. Chris Daly may be down for the South Florida Bulls. And he's played a fine ball game. It is Daly. Eight oh five left to go in the contest. Well, the clock is you know it's winding down here. Now, should Pitt score, uh, you know, all the every coach in America on the sideline has a chart telling them what to do. But I don't need a chart here. I think I got to go for two. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think eight oh five. Yeah, with the time the way it is. Ten, because you know, still, even if you don't make it, you can still kick a field goal. So you have to go for two. That's obviously a no-brainer. From the 20, first and 10. Priestley, again, all kinds of time going for the end zone. And English just off his fingertips. English was open. Yeah, he was wide open on the corner route and uh, just slightly overthrown. That was uh, that's for uh, John Miller just a tad late getting to the corner out there playing a double zone. Uh, that's a combination. The corner has to work himself under that route and the safety has to get up over the top. Second and ten. Under pressure, Priestley puts it up for grabs, and the Bulls intercept it, but there is a flag down. One official's calling it first to 10, South Florida. Let's see what the call is. Boy, you talk about a crucial call. I don't see a Pittsburgh receiver anywhere in the neighborhood. I cannot imagine what this call was. Unless they're calling interference against the... Yep, that's what it was. Oh, my Lord. Wow. It's on Bernard Brown. Let's take a look at it right here. Let's see if it's a good call. Well, you know, it, yeah, I mean, that's a little, little push that's right there. Defense. That's a, a tough call. Family. Automatic first down. Wow. Wow. That's where you always want your corners to get their head back to the football. He has his head back to the ball and makes contact. They don't call it, I guarantee it. Crucial, crucial mistake. First down at the five-yard line. 7.55 left to go in the contest. Bulls clinging to an eight-point lead. Priestley for Roth. The two. Now they're saying incomplete. That was. We were blocked off, but I, I, I thought I had a feeling that he had dropped it. Boy, this is a, a gut wrenching drive right here. I mean, gut wrenching. Let's, there's a good angle. Here we can see it. Oh, boy. They've been a reception. Officials right there. They got a better view than we have. He saw it. Second down and goal from Ball the must have slipped out of his hand late. His official had a great view of it. Three seconds on the play clock. And there was movement for Pittsburgh. They were trying to beat the play clock. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Boy, oh boy. Wow. Second and ten now. Boy, crucial, crucial, crucial juncture of this game. 
And more importantly, second and goal from the 10. Exactly. Priestley with time. Touchdown, English. Maurice Tucker right here gets caught looking back inside. That's a good route, a good throw, and a good catch. It really was. You got to give him credit now. You go for two. This yep. is for the tie with 7.39 left to go in the contest. That must and have the been. South Florida Bulls call a timeout. They'll have one remaining. Trying to get some fresh legs on the field. Uh, you know, right now, I think that's a good call right there because right now, you know, you're on your heels. You've lost all your momentum. You got a young football team. You got to get them settled down right here because this is an incredibly crucial play. Early in the third quarter, the Bulls had a 22 yard pass from Markwell Blackwell to Brian Fisher. At that time, the Bulls went up 28 7. That was at 5.55 left to go in the third. Since then, the Pitt Panthers have come storming back. They now have an opportunity for the tie, trailing 28-26. You know, and this is two weeks in a row. They've had a Division I opponent on the road, on the ropes, had a, a comfortable lead, and couldn't finish it off if, if that indeed happens today. Now, that's, you know, this is, game is a long way from being over. But, uh, you know, you have to be able to finish. That's a tough thing for a young team. They just do not have enough maturity right now and mental toughness to get that done. It's the South Florida bench, boy, I tell you, they know what a big play this is. English, five catches, 135 yards, and two touchdowns. This for the tie, the two-point conversion. Five seconds on the play clock. And the defense by Bernard Brown, again looking for English. English had just caught the touchdown pass, so the Bulls will keep that two-point advantage. Huge, huge play by Bernard Brown. Huge. That's exactly the same route they ran on the other side for the touchdown. Let's take a look at it. Excellent job of getting his hand right there on the football. Great job. 7.39 left to go. The Bulls cling into a two-point lead. Bernard Brown with his fingertips comes up with the biggest defensive play today for the South Florida Bulls on the two-point conversion. And there's a look at the Bulls' defense. Spent, tired. They've given up 20 unanswered points. And the Bulls still lead, however, 28-26. Lots to kick off. DeAndre Rubin at the six. Rubin has had a ton of big plays and comes out with a very large return to the 37. You know, Gerald Hayes with the tackle on special teams. I think if I'm Pitt, I, I think at some juncture in this game, I'd want to kick it away from DeAndre <laughs> Rubin. I mean, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it doesn't seem like that's that hard to figure out. Because uh, he, he's lightning. I'll tell you, he's scary back there. 7.29 left to go in the contest. Now, with this South Florida offense, eating the clock is something that this offense is not adept at. Yep. And I, if, in my thinking, they've got to score here. They have to score. South Florida up by two. Hugh Smith with the catch on first down. Nice catch in traffic. Took a heck of a shot. Good and to he see holds him come on. Back. Smith with the touchdown catch earlier today. Boy, watch this shot he takes. Again, the ball's out quick. Boom. Whack. Right on the chin. Gerald Hayes with the hit. Yeah. Nearly takes the helmet off. Gerald Hayes 
Six three, two fifty. Second down and three. Another quick pass. Tipped and nearly intercepted. Oh. Intended for Smith. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and this was this is really nothing more than a sweep, and that ball is tipped right at the line of scrimmage. South Florida now with third and three. South Florida nine of 18 on third down, but none bigger than this. Seven seconds on the play clock. Ruben on the catch, Ruben on the run. Ruben cuts it back to the 20. Ruben still going. DeAndre Ruben is oh. on the five yard line. One on one coverage, they did it again. They put Ruben away from a triple and he's lightning in a bottle, that guy. How about this passing combination? of Markwell, Blackwell, and DeAndre Rubin. Quick slant from press coverage. Great job of regaining his balance. Good move right here. All the way down to the three yard line. A 51 yard gain and the biggest 51 yards of this game so far. And give Blackwell cr credit, he really threw a strike. He didn't have much uh, area to fit that ball in. He made a great throw. Now this, this is a little bit scary here for this offense. Now you've got two backs in the game. What a day for Dent. Now you have two backs in the game and there's some confusion out here. And the Bulls have to call a timeout. That is their final timeout. This is the problem with this offense now. You know, it, you just don't get to practice a two-back set like this very often. You got Charlie Ross in there who's a big back. It looks like I, I would assume they're going to put him at fullback, but I don't know. I think that's what the confusion was about. Now, one of the other problems, even though the Bulls would be so happy if they get points on the board, so far they've only eaten up 69 seconds. Yep. <laughs> This fast strike offense is amazing. It really is. Uh, it, it does make for exciting football. You got to say that. Now, uh, nice job by Blackwell of calling timeout. You cannot have any confusion in that situation. And again, a five yard penalty here would just kill this offense. Right. Now, this is really the first time that we've seen this offense line up in a true goal line situation. Uh, don't know exactly what we're going to see. I think we're going to see uh, one tight end in the game and two backs, and that's exactly what you have in the game. And you got uh, now you got two tight ends in the game and one wide receiver. Now you have to have the mentality here of knocking people off the ball, and it's hard for that offensive line to change gears. Rackard and Crosley, the ball carriers. Flag down. Might have been motion on South Florida. Boy, that is a disastrous error if that's the call. Disastrous. Double. Full start. Yep. Offense. Five yard Oh, boy. Two that that is just a killer. Take a look at it. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, the center flinched. The center. Ball started. Wow. Now you got to go back and get your wide receivers in the game, I would think. And you got that, remember now, you got that big 6 5 Huey Whitaker receiver available. And that's who's out there. First and goal from the eight. You might want to think about just throwing one up to him. And that's exactly what the Bulls are doing, looking for Whitaker. And a flag is down. Wow. William Ferguson called for interference. Official felt he was on his back on the slant. 
And the pit crowd doesn't think much of it. Pass interference, defense, in the end zone. Automatic first down on the two yard line. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see if the official's correct. Let's see if we can see it from this angle. Oh, you can't quite see it. I mean, again, that, that didn't look that bad to me. Now, we get the two tight ends back in the game, yes. Two tight ends and two backs. Let's see if we can execute this now with some pressure on us. From the two, Crossley close to the goal line, and he shorts. Crossley, the ball Gerald Hayes, a huge tackle for Pittsburgh. You know, and I'll tell you, the, the, you know, the one thing unusual is happening here. The clock is actually running. <laughs> but there's still 5.55 left to go in the contest. Second and goal from the two. Lockwell is short. And I'll tell you, the officials missed that call because Pitt clearly had 12 defenders on the field when that ball was snapped. Now, you know, the first play of this series was a play action pass. Look how close that is to the goal Very line. Wow. Blackwell again, and again, he's short. They're still going at it. And inches. You're up by two. 5.05 left to go. No timeouts. What do you do? Well, two things. Uh, either play action pass or you run the toss just like Pitt did earlier against South Florida's goal line defense. No way you go for the field goal. Oh, no. I, I think you've got to score here. Seven seconds on the play clock. The pass incomplete. Oh, that's a good call. Flag. Now that was clearly interference. Clearly. Will this be called on William Ferguson? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. No question about it. And that, you know, and that's the, the, the really good thing about having big receivers because they draw interference penalties very easily. Pass interference, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Yeah, he, he got mugged. I mean, he got mugged. First and goal at the two. Now that'll give the Bulls a first down inside the one. Hey, the clock is down to 433. <laughs> Blackwell will try the quarterback sneak again, and this time he gets in. Touchdown, South Florida, and that may be the biggest touchdown in this program's history. Well, that was huge, and I'll tell you, it was a very good call by the official on the interference because, I mean, he absolutely got mugged. And a good push by the offensive line there, and uh, Markwell just, boy, that's no, yeah, no question. He definitely got in. And how big is this point after? Real big. Santiago Gramatica with his biggest kick yet. <laughs> and some nervous moments. The kick is good. <laughs> but in the paper tomorrow, it'll look every bit as good as it could. The Four. kick is good. 35. 26 South Florida with the lead with 431 to go. Pitt has to score twice now. What an amazing, amazing football game this has been. And you know, with 431 left, I mean there could be all kinds of things happening here. One more look at the touchdown. Somewhere in there is Markwell Blackwell. <laughs> Sean King is, is kind of his uh, guy he looks up to, and that's kind of a Sean, th uh, Sean King uh, deal there. Thanking the good Lord. 
4.31 left to go. Jim Levitt's team, if nothing else, has shown incredible hearts. And there's DeAndre Rubin. That touchdown set up on a 51-yard pass play. Rubin with a huge game today. Gramatica to kick off. This is Cox at the five. Cox still going. And the Bulls pull him down at the 37-yard line. John Miller, the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. Now, if I'm Pitt, I go to a no-huddle offense right now with 421 left, and I know I have to score twice. First and 10, Panthers at their own 37. Same ploy as South Florida, of course. You huddle on the sideline before you send them in. So you don't know what personnel they have. 421 left to go in the contest. The Bulls lead by nine. This is why, you know, he's playing the ball all the way right here. It makes a great break. Yes, sir. What a play. Now check out the reaction by Markwell Blackwell. He knows he's going back on the field to wrap this game up. Well, now, I hate to come back and say this, Al, but again. But there's still 4-14 yeah, left to go. And, and with this offense, this is not an offense where it's easy to run time off the clock because now you're going to get all eight-man fronts against uh, this. Crossley hit at midfield, gain of two yards. I don't care what, you have to run it three downs here. In my opinion, you have to run it for, for let's put it this way, at least you've got to run it this down for sure, and then you got to make a decision on third down because the clock is running. And, of course, uh, Pitt just has one timeout left. South Florida has used all their timeouts. And there is Antonio Bryant, a Heisman Trophy candidate on that bench. You don't think he's frustrated with an ankle injury, a Heisman Trophy possibility, not able to play today. And Marco Blackwell throws it away. And Ben Bryant, he's from Florida. He's, he played high school football with a lot of players on the South Florida team. And he wanted to play in this game, if nothing else, for bragging rights. And you don't think, if the Bulls hang on, that he's going to hear about this over the summer? Uh, and and let's, let's be honest, this really, really hurt the Pitt football team not having him today. Third down and eight. Lockwell on a rollout. Gets it away. Incomplete to Fisher. Well, the worst thing is, worst thing is that stopped the clock. I, I got to be honest, I don't like the call on second down. I thought, I really thought that they uh, should have run it and got another 35 seconds off the clock, or at least forced Pitt to use their timeout. 328 left to go in the contest. Devin Sanderson, the Bulls need to get a good punt off. Anything but a block here will work for South Florida. English back to receive, and a bad snap. But the pooch punts, and look at this. Look at this. Sanderson with a huge play, first of all, to pick up the snap, and then a 45-yard punt, pinning the Panthers at the five-yard line. This is bringing up a lot of unfond memories for me. Yeah, a real bad snap, and uh, that's just a nice job of getting it off. But, you know, in uh, NFL Europe last year, we had problems with snappers all year, as you well know. And, boy, that is very, very frustrating as a football coach. South Florida, very fortunate right there. I can't believe that Pitt did not come after that punt and try to block it. At the five. First and ten. Pitt trails by nine with 3.19 to go. Priestley in trouble. Hits Slade. Slade fumbles. 
Ball out of bounds. Pittsburgh will keep it. I think it'll be a gain of one by the time it's all over. Key thing again is the clock has stopped. 310, uh, you know, when you play football this way, 310 is an eternity. Had a little push now this time. Had some pretty good push up front. Grolinger coming and forcing the uh, throw. And this ball is laying there for a long period of time. Bernard Brown put his hat right on the ball. Pitt was fortunate. But this would be a devastating loss uh, for Walt Harris. You're a 22 point favorite at home. Uh, that's what you call a devastating loss. And on the other side for the South Florida Bulls easily the biggest win in their history. No question about it and really this is a win that sets the tone for this program. Uh, for South Florida the one thing you just cannot afford to do is give them another big play. That's what separates the South Florida Bulls in their biggest football win ever. Very little gain for Yogi Roth. Actually, it's a gain of three yards. And out of nowhere, South Florida is getting a push with their front four against the pass. They're getting some pressure. Third down. Kirkley. He did not get to the 15 yard line. He is shy of the first down. You, got, you have to go for it here. Needing two scores, you have to go for it. 235. Pittsburgh has one timeout remaining. Fourth down. Priestley looking for a receiver. He's got it, and he's got a first down. Kirkley on the catch. 214. Clock stopped. That's how Florida defense has been on the field this entire second half. Yeah, they really have. And now you're looking at uh, bringing four new defenders in to try to keep their legs fresh. You got uh, Greg Walls coming in. You've got Jereniak coming in at the two inside spots. Flags down. That's on Pitt. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, no time expired on the clock. First and 15 at the 18. First and 15. Priestley wants to go deep. The tackle by Koika Mitchell. He wraps up Yogi Roth. 818 yards of offense today for these two teams. Clock is running. Clock is running. This is again key that that thing keeps going. Priestley under pressure and Greg Wall pulls him down. And the clock is now running. By Greg Wall. What a job by Rick Kravitz and that whole defensive staff. Boy, they... And Pittsburgh has to use its final timeouts. And that's a mistake because that timeout is, should have been called as soon as the sack occurred. It should have been timeout automatically. 96 seconds left to go for the South Florida Bulls, and that's what separates them from their biggest win ever in their football history. In fact, I would venture to say, when you look at the athletic program overall at the University of South Florida, this may be one of its biggest wins in sports, period. Uh, absolutely, because, you know, again, you know, beating uh, Troy State, who's a good team, is one thing, but coming up on the road and beating Pitt, Who's, who's ranked in the top 30 in the country. That, that's, that's a whole different matter. And this is the kind of win 
that you build the program with because you've got a lot of recruits watching. It, it legitimizes your program. It really does. You can play with anybody. And the South Florida Bulls hope to go in to Conference USA in the year 2003. They will be there. I would venture to guess outside of Southern Mississippi, how many teams from Conference USA 30, could 15, come in here and win 18, under these circumstances? Well, you're absolutely correct. Third down and 15. Priestley gets nailed again. Is it a fumble or a pass? The South Florida Bulls believe it's a fumble. I think the officials so have rolled it a fumble. And first down, South Florida. And that absolutely is going to wrap up this great, great win. Wow. Boy, what has this football team gone through today? Absolutely incredible. And showed, and after the real tough loss on the road last week, showed some mental toughness at the end of this game to make the plays necessary. Maurice Jones on the recovery, the hit by Daly. What an effort. Greg, Greg Walls, Walls also, also in on the hit, yep. Right there. Greg Walls, of course, had that huge sack. This, when this final score goes up across the country, it is going to be a shocker. And all you have to do is take a knee. They cannot stop the clock, so all you got to do is take a knee. Uh, that's, that's, that's some confusion on the sideline, not getting the right. And, and Pitt is absolutely shocked by this South Florida team. Good ball. The layup game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Now, from the game's opening play, you can see the South Florida Bulls came here to win. They, an onside kick on the opening play, and the Bulls refused to back down from there. No question about it. Jim Levitt set the tone for this team with that open. That took a lot of guts to call that onside kick, but he said, boys, we're here to win. In the, and another flag is down. Jim Levitt, <laughs> I'm telling you. This last 90 seconds will be the, la the, the longest 90 seconds of his life. Well, you know, you want to see your offense, uh, you know, you want to see your offense execute no matter what the situation. And, and there's, <laughs> I, I don't know if they were mentally prepared to run this victory uh, uh, formation here in this game. Illegal formation, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. First and 20 at the 30. First and 20, ball marked at the 30. The Bulls care about one thing, and that is the clock at this point. And of course, now that uh, they can't stop it, it's just going to uh, run. They won't snap it until there's about one second to go on the play clock. And uh, again, it's just a kneel down for two more plays, and that's it. In fact, they might even, depend on how the officials call it here, yeah, it should be two more plays. What a great victory for this program. And uh, I'll tell you, my, I take my hat off to Jim Levitt and that whole football staff and, uh, and Blackwell and, because uh, they really made a dramatic improvement from their first game. Another knee for Markwell Blackwell. Unbelievable victory. And, and look at the crowd. There's a, a, about 500 USF fans in the end zone. There they are. They made this trip. They were excited about this football game. How pumped up are they? They believe they had an opportunity to win this. And look at Jim. Levitt is still working it with nine seconds. And that's it. Shocking score across the country, I guarantee you that. South Florida with its biggest football victory yet. The first time against a Big East team. And the South Florida Bulls win it by a score of 35-26. This is a game that kicked off at 1.30. It's nearly 5.30. And the Bulls earned every bit of this victory there are the two head coaches shaking hands when we come back we'll talk to the winning coach jim levitt
The Bulls win 35 26. And check out the scene here at Heinz Field. About 500 South Florida fans made the trip up to Pittsburgh. They believed in this football team. And this football team says thank you. A very special moment for the South Florida football program. And what a victory for the South Florida Bulls. The Bulls with their first win on the year. And can this be any sweeter? Let's go down to the field and the winning coach, Jim Levitt. Hey, coach, how's it feel? Well, it's always good. It always feels good when you get a win, you know, and uh, I mean, uh, the guys played hard all the way through. You know, it's just like I said in the first half, we made so many mistakes. God, we made so many mistakes. I, I guess I shouldn't sound like that. <laughs> I mean, we made so many mistakes the second half, and we can't even get a, a victory huddle because we, I guess we don't know how to do that, I guess. I don't know. Hey, Coach, you just yeah. beat Pittsburgh for yeah. the Big East. Yeah, that was kind of fun, isn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Our guys, our guys competed well, and, you know, if we could just keep them, you know, do, do the right things, we got a chance to, to have a pretty good team. You know, so it was kind of fun, yeah. Hey, Jim, this is Doug. Hi, Doug. I, I really thought you set the tone with your onside kickoff at the start of the game. You said, boys, we're here to win this game. Yeah, that's right. We were going to be aggressive. We we saw that uh, on their last year film, and uh, one guy was up on the hash mark a little bit, and we'd worked on this for two weeks. We Even we were going to do it against Northern Illinois if they gave it to us. But, I, yeah, you know how I am. I, I kind of like to have fun <laughs> like that. So we, we that was kind of fun. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Go Thank enjoy the victory uh, and have a good it. flight home. All right, thanks, guys. All right, see ya. The South Florida Bulls giving thanks. One on one on the season, and boy, 101. The South Florida Bulls beat Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. <laughs> University of South Florida football and Fox Sportsnet has been brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. 35-26, the South Florida Bulls win it over Pittsburgh. Markwell Blackwell, 37 of 65, 343 yards, four touchdowns, also runs for a touchdown. DeAndre Rubin, 11 catches, 144 yards, and two touchdowns. Thank you for joining us here at Heinz Field. Catch more college football action on Fox Sports Net Monday, September 10th at 7 o'clock when the University of Miami, Miami entertains Rutgers. Coming up next on Fox Sports Net, the Rock and Roll Half Marathon from Virginia Beach. For Doug Graber, I'm Al Keck saying so, so long. Again, that final score, the South Florida Bulls beat Pitt at Pitt 35-26. So long, everybody.